Welcome to this free comic book creation beginners course. During this three and a half hour tutorial, you will be learning all the basics and tricks of comics creation. If you'd like to learn everything and draw like a pro, head to skillademia.com and get access to the full course. Now, let's begin. Hi there, ladies and gentlemen. This is Aisha Amara, designer from London. And I will be taking this, uh, taking you through this course, the comic book creation course. And um, so we're going to be using Photoshop for this course. Um, so I'm just going to be starting with the basics. I'm going to spend a lot of time on the basics just so that we cover everything in full. Over here, you can see when you open up Photoshop, you'll be presented with something like this. So these are all your basic, your these are all your recent projects. It will show here. Um, so on the left hand side, if I just do create new, I'll present it with something that looks like this. Now, um, these are all our presets over here. So if I go to print, you got print, art, illustration, web, mobile, etc. So uh, mainly we'll be using uh, print, art and web. However, um, you can also create your own ones just by um, create a custom um, uh, custom um, canvas. So if I just click that view all presets, so here under print, we've got A4, A6, A5, A3, etc. B5. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to click A4 here. And um, over here, you can see these are all our settings. So this is the size of it. I can view this in pixels if I want. So it's quite a big canvas here. Uh, I can change the orientation so I can have it portrait or landscape. So um, I'm going to stick with landscape, just a uh, portrait, just to show you something else. So over here, we got our, we, we got our color modes so we can have RBG or CMYK. So if you're going to print your work, then you're going to want to use CMYK. If you're going to use it just for something that will be viewed on a screen on a computer or a phone, you're going to use RB, RGB. Uh, so with that being said, I'll just click create. And here we go. This is our canvas. So if I now I'll just get a this is my brush I'll just okay so um, one of the things that we can do here so if I hold alt I can scroll with my mouse wheel up and uh, zoom in zoom out uh, I can also um, if I uh, hold spacebar I can move the canvas around okay um, so these are very important so if I do a picture here for example a little scribble I can zoom in yeah, and I can mess around with that here if I want. I can uh, start um, carving out different kind of shapes and stuff like this. And Yeah, um, so also uh, control Z that will go back. Uh, command Z on a Mac. Um, also, so now I'm going to zoom out. Uh, another thing, if I go to image up here, I can rotate my canvas if I want so I can rotate it this way okay also if I draw a little picture here so if I just uh, I'm just gonna get my little picture going here so one of the things that we're gonna do a lot in this um, um, in this course is we're going to flip the canvas quite a lot so um, if for example I do a sort of picture like this yeah just like a little little doodle what I can also do is go up to image and go to image rotation and flip the canvas horizontal so now what this will allow me to do is create cor correct my image so what I can do here um, hold on, okay, so uh, oh, okay so yeah so I can see it from another angle which will show me certain things that I might need to correct about my image so more about that later so uh, what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to get rid of all this here. Um, OK, so another thing is that over here, down here, we've got our layers. So over here is what you call layer stack. So I'm going to create another layer. There you go. And if I draw an object on here like this, uh, still in white. So here we go. I've got an object here. Um, and I've got it like this. So what I can do is I can press V, yeah, V, and I can 
basically click on my object and move it around. So for example, if I do a picture and I want to have a few different versions of the same thing, I can basically go like this, make a little drawing here and say what I can do is move that along here and then I can just do another one. So there we go. Yeah. Okay. So um, what I've just done there is I've control A, which will give me these what they call ants going around the edge that will select everything. So what I did is I selected everything and I pressed uh, backspace or you can press delete and it will delete what's inside the layer. So if I don't have that selected, if I press delete, it will delete the whole layer. As you see, it's disappeared from there. Um, so that is the first bit I want to talk about. So uh, just to run over some basic things with your layers, with your, with your document settings. So I'm going to do, I'm going to quit that again. Um, I'm not going to save. So I'll go to create new again. Now what I'm going to do this time is I'm just going to, um, let's say I create enough, let's just say a four again, but this time I'm going to click artboards. So this is a sort of semi new feature of Photoshop. So what this allows us to do is have multiple, um, images within one uh, document. Yeah. So for example, I can um, have an image here. And if I want, I can go up here, click and hold this area here. And I've got this artboard tool. So if I click the actual artboard, okay. So if I click up here, what I can do is I can actually drag out a new artboard if I want. Okay. But with this artboard, you can see, I can add another page to the left, another page going down, I can add multiple pages just like that. And what will happen is you will get a second artboard here. So what will happen here? So if I've got this artboard, I've just deleted, I've just um, hidden it from view, which is what this does. So I create a layer on this so I can draw something here. Yeah. So I can just draw a little, just a rough shape like this. Then I can basically go here, make another layer under this artboard and I can draw here. So this is very useful. Um, particularly if you're going to use some reference images, you can load up your reference here. You can make another one here. And also with your artboard tool, you can just, you can just drag a few out here like this. And this can be cool if you want to just, um, you know, maybe make some color swatches, just small little things. So if I make a layer under each of those, click on that, make a layer. So uh, click it down, then make a layer. There we go. So these are now here. That's that layer. And that is click on this one. And that's that layer. Okay. So uh, for example, I might want to just, you know, make a swatch on this side here like this, get another color, maybe a darker red, go like this and start planning out my color, color swatches. Maybe I'll get a there. So and then you can just, if you want to um, use those color swatches, you can just click on your layer here and you can just select your color. All these controls I'll explain a bit later, but it's just showing about how useful these art balls can be. Um, so I can have something going on like this, can have something in the background. And that is what I wanted to cover here. So I've dealt with art boards. I've dealt with um, creating documents, document settings, editing your documents. And lastly, we will deal with the good old save. So I can just go save as now what you'll get is this. So you can save it to your cloud if you have one, or you could just save it to your computer. Then you will get a drop down menu like this. You can save it. You can put it anywhere you want. So I'm not going to save this. I'm just going to leave it there. Don't save. So um, art boards are cool. Another thing just want to run over quickly is if I've got a picture like this, say I don't want to use art boards, but I want to have multiple images on one document. I can basically say if I'm making a, um, let's just call this a, some sort of head, a little bit wonky, but no problem. So I can just have that picture there and I can continue to color this picture. Now, it, anything I put above the layer will go. So I'll get another color here just to show you how these layers work. 
I can just color above everything here. So that will block out anything that's above, that's below the layer. However, if I take this layer and put it underneath this layer, then it becomes the background for that layer and everything that is above will show over. So this is what we'll do to color stuff. So now if I want to just say I've been working on this for a while, I like what's going on, but I want to try another idea and I don't have to make a new document or anything like that. I can just drag this down over here to this little folder and that goes into a group. So now I can get rid of the group. I can carry on painting and I can have a different uh, type of person. Maybe I want him to be facing this way. Yeah. And then same thing goes, I can make that into a group and um, I can select this, which will drop down, it will show me what I've got and I can basically make multiple pages. So when we make comics, this will come in handy quite a lot. Okay. Okay. So that's all for this section of the course. I will uh, say goodbye for now. Okay, hi there ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the comic book creation course. Um, I am Aisha Namara, designer from London, and I'm going to just show you now how to use the brush tool. So this is part of the basic training. So I'm going to do, I'm just going to get a small, um, I'm going to use an A5, and I'm going to put it to uh, landscape, and here we have our canvas. Okay, so the brush tool is a very a very powerful tool in Photoshop. So I'm going to start by showing you the basics. So next to your P button, there we go. That's your P button. You have these two keys here. These are your brackets. Okay. So one is uh, like this and one is like that. So this one here, this makes your brush bigger. And this one here, this makes your brush smaller. So I can press this one and make my brush like this. I can press this one and make my brush like that. And over here, you can see that's where your size, your size of your brush is. You can also do that here. Um, now, when you've got your brush, usually you'll get something like this, okay? So this is your default brush. What happens, um, you've got no tapering of the, of the, of the stroke. Um, so it's similar to a fine liner. So if I make the brush tip really small, smaller than that, you can hardly see it. So now it's similar to using a fine liner. Okay. Um, so another thing is that, um, so what I could do is I could start to make out my shape like this. And if I want, I can go up a couple notches like you use with your fine liners and add some line weight to it okay so um this is your basics how to make your brush bigger and smaller um now what i'm going to show you here just quickly because i don't really use these myself but these are all your brush settings so you can change the type of brush so you can change the shape of the brush you can go over here you can change the you can squash the brush you can angle the brush so this is quite a good one here when you're making, you know, big shapes, you know, you want to just say you're doing a painting a background or, or maybe like an aerial ship even. Yeah. This is a really good one to start making some thumbnails. And if I, I make this really smaller, I can start to get smaller shapes, make some variation here like this. And you can see that this is starting to become sort of like a little spaceship. Maybe it's based on a dragon. You've got a dragon head there. And um, another thing is that if with the brush, I uh, just want to show you something here really quick. If I hold Alt, then any color that's on my canvas, I can click that and then I can start to use that. So I can start to put some windows in here. Yeah, this works for any kind of colors as well. And then what I can also do is make it smaller and add some some details like this, maybe some details like that. So just to um, give the thumbnail a bit of form and to read a bit nicer, you can see I can do something like this. I'm just going to get rid of all of this here real quick. Okay, so what I'm using now, I've got to talk about in a second. That's my eraser tool. So here you go. You've got your 
your basic um, shape here, like your shape that I've just made using the shape of the brush. And in the same way that you can do it, you can use it um, horizontally, you can also make shapes vertically, okay? Like this, yeah. You can also mess around with both ways, yeah? So this, maybe this is some sort of speeder. And I've got a guy standing here, maybe. Maybe he's a bit more, you know, he's standing like this over it and he's driving the speeder. And I can just add a few little lines here just to interest it up a bit. There we go. I'm just going to refine the shape a bit here. Okay, so this is uh, just using your uh, standard brush, circle brush, squashing it, stretching it, um, and using it like that. So I'm going to press Alt. So Alt will pick up the color, like I said, and I can start to use it. So one of the things that you can do on here is change the shape dynamics. So you can, if you go to pen pressure, then now I will get a tapered line, which um, is very useful for line drawing. Okay. So some of the these are little exercises you can do here. You can just try to follow the same direction with your lines. You can start the same points like that. And you can also do this one is a very good design one. So you just hover over it and then you try and connect the two lines. Hover over it, try and connect the two lines. Hover over it, try and connect the two lines. You can do three lines. You can try and connect all three. And you can do them far apart. Yeah. Um, so these are little design exercises that they always teach in design schools. So I've got that there, got this there, got this there like that. So to undo, I'm pressing Control Z, which will undo. So I can get my line right. And there you go. Okay. So. Um, However, I'm going to disable this because I actually prefer, I don't like using this because it takes a lot of time to sort of bring up the menus and everything. So what I prefer to do is click here and that will give me my tapered line. Okay, and the same thing applies if I make it larger, then I'll get a bigger line. If I make it smaller, I will get a smaller line. I can make it super small. So it just hardly can see it. Um, so that is the brush tool basics. Um, now there's a couple other things I want to um, explain with the brush as well. And before I move on to the next section. So this is a very important tool to use, um, especially um, with what we're doing creating comic books. So over here, if I click that, that will give me my opacity settings. So now the lighter I press, the lighter it will be more of a gray and the harder I press it will start to be black okay so this is very good for if I was gonna say sort of sketch an object here sketch a shape and then after I want to go over and I can start to build up my lines um, another way that this could be good is if you just you start with a light sketch then you take it off and now we're into our inking mode so in comic books you would always start with pencils and then you would go into inking okay so um, this is this is what how you can use the brush in Photoshop so you can start with your basic soft brush and then go over by turning this off and it becomes your inking brush okay um, the other thing which I want to cover is this here the flow so if I take this off so I've got this shape here, yeah, and I want to indicate that there's some tone on this shape, yeah. So you can see that this is black, yeah. Um, but maybe I don't want it to be full black, so I can click here to opacity, and I can start to. It will start to be grey, and I can start to add tone like this. Now, one of the things that happens is that you can see these little kind of. Let's zoom in a bit. So to zoom in, I'm pressing Control, pressing Control plus, and to zoom out, I'm pressing Control minus, and that would be Command on your Mac. Okay, so you can see that you're getting all these little kind of lines, these shapes where the color is crossing over. So to avoid that, especially when you're rendering, 
is that you want to take down the flow. Okay, so we'll take the flow right down. And now, when I'm drawing, I'm getting a much softer, a soft application of the tone. Okay, so now I can start to add a bit more darkness at the top where the light will be furthest away. And then I can start picking up the color. And you can see there's less of that going on. So there is a bit of it, but if I reduce the tone, um, it will start to be able to disappear. Yeah, so this is one of the ways that you can use your brush tool to get a smoother gradient when, when you're adding your tone. And then I can just add a bit more here, a bit more there. And now the object is starting to read like a 3D object as opposed to just a 2D one or a 2D 3D shape or whatever. So there you go that is how to use the brush tool now the other tool that is very useful is the eraser tool so if I press E yeah I've got that eraser tool and I can change the shape of my eraser again let's take off um, the dynamic so I can change it to this shape where I'd have like that kind of shape going on and this is also applying to my eraser so if I take that off now that's the shape of my eraser okay so I can change it to this I can change it to any brush that you have in your library so um, for different shapes, you might want to change it, but you can also change these values here. So I could just start to pull back some of these shapes if I want to, yeah. Um, so with the eraser tool and the brush tool together, they work really nicely when you're creating shapes, okay? So if I get my brush to get make it normal, and now I can just start from my brush, I've got this. So this is still using my tone, my tone. So I take off opacity settings. So I've just got, uh, and the other thing is if you press D, that will get you back to your black and white. If I press X, it will start to switch them. Okay. So I can now start adding some shapes. Now you can see that the flow, how much the flow is really nicely sort of softening my edge, my brush. However, if I don't want that, I can put my flow back up yeah and I've got a solid shape again so now I can start to make these shapes here and with my eraser tool I can just start to carve out the shape that I want okay so this is very important when, when we're doing thumbnails so when we're making characters sometimes we use thumbnails just to get their design um, the read of their design their their um, the shape of their costume, the shape of hat, shape of anything. So I can just now, you can see that I've just sketched a little figurine. Now I can just start to edit that so I can start to. So this is another thing that you can practice. So you can just start carving out shapes. Yeah. So, um, that was how to cover the that is the brush and the eraser tool so the eraser also uses these tools up here so you can see uh, sorry I'll just get my eraser up so that is a hard eraser if I click that it will be a soft eraser okay so this is how to use the brush and eraser tool and I um, I will see you next lesson for the pencil brush tool okay thank you very much speak to you soon okay hi everybody welcome back so this is this is the uh, comic book creation course and this is about the pencil tool okay so we've we've discussed before about the the brush tool which is what I'm using now I've got my opacity on going to yeah so you can see this is the brush tool here so the pencil tool is very similar to the brush tool. It's over here, it's under the brush tool. And what that deals with is pixels, okay? So if we zoom in, let's zoom right in. So you can see it's actually, it's actually a pixel brush. Whereas the other brush, if we zoom in like that, you can see it's a lot, it's a lot smoother, okay? So we are zoomed in very close here. Okay, so if I zoom out, you can see the 
sort of difference between them. So if I press B, you know that brings up the brush tool, okay, B. However, if I have selected the pencil tool, and then I might select my eraser tool to erase some stuff, let's take the opacity off of that, yeah, then when I press B this time, it should, that's right, go to my pencil tool. So it's sort of you either use one or the other, and whatever one you will select, whatever one you're selected, when you press B, it will go back to that one. So the reason uh, most a lot of people don't use this tool, this uh, pencil tool, but I've, I've, I've included it because I think it's really, really nice to use. It's much smoother than the brush tool when you're actually using it. It's much more responsive. And I think that's really um, useful when you're making, um, especially for sketching, yeah? So if I select my pencil tool, and I will just zoom out a bit here. So this is, this is sort of me just scribbling around. If I go to my brush tool, it's just, it feels heavier. With the pencil tool, it feels very light. And that's why I'm including it here. So one of the ways that we can use this is if I select a, a gray. So I could start to, it feels really intuitive when you're drawing with it. So I could start to sketching a character, let's say, something like this, yeah. And it's just so, it feels so intuitive to draw with. Now all these tools at the top and all these tools over here, they still apply. It's just a different way Photoshop is you, is creating the line. It's using hard pixels as opposed to sort of soft, um, soft, Gradate, uh, gradiated pixels. So here we go. I'm just sketching in like this, and it's really nice to 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 use. So I'm just including that because you might want to um, start using something like this. You know, just for your when you're getting used to Photoshop, drawing on Photoshop, have a mess around with using this pencil tool as well as the brush tool. Okay, um, so you can see I can start getting some tones and values quite easily, quite quickly. And um, it's also, I believe, um, better, f uh, um, it takes less CPU power. So if you're using a, um, a system that might be, might struggle with the brush. So I'll show you here. If I make this really big, you can see that it's takes a while to load it. Whereas if I get the if I get the brush and do that, it takes even longer, you see? And that's because Photoshop is using a different way to make these tools, to make them work. So when you're working on bigger canvases, you might wanna consider using the pencil tool, especially in the sketch stages, okay? So that is um, really, that. that's all there is to it, really. There's nothing more to say. Um, with the pencil tool, but I might um, I might use I might use it once in a while in some of the future um, some of the future sections of this course when we're creating characters and stuff like that. So if I go now, make this lower. Now I can just start to go around my shape. You can see that. So it's a lot smoother, it feels smoother, and it's it's just, um, especially when you're drawing um, more detailed things, such as ba uh, interiors, settings, and stuff like that. When you're using a, a normal brush, it you we wanna make these long lines to, to start sketching out your, your rooms and stuff. And when you get into the finer detail stuff, you wanna just keep it real loose and you want to just start sketching stuff in then it's it just feels nicer to do yeah so it's more I, I would say it's closer to using a pencil than actually using a pen or something with a harder sort of finish to it um, and I just prefer to use the pencil especially in these kind of interiors so then I would just start blocking in things like this and shapes and stuff like that and then I will just take down the opacity of the layer 
and then I'll be able to go over with a brush make this a lot smaller then I'll be able to go over with a brush so you can see as you zoom in there's a lot less detail there so then for that that's where the brush will come in so I might want to just start to get my shapes out like this start to okay so for giving yourself a basic um, a basic layout a basic design of something with a lot of detail the pencil tool is very useful so I'd say mess around with it have a go and we'll do a lot more stuff like this later this is just me just messing around really and um, I'm just showing you sort of one of the ways in which I use the pencil so I would say with a pencil with the pencil tool just be real messy real loose and just try to um, be free with your designs yeah so um, in the sketching stages you can get a gray so if I click here pull up my color picker I can get a gray and can just start messing around so you can make it smaller as you want as well so we can start to um, get some really nice ideas going on so the same techniques apply so you can start yeah doing these ones doing in different directions trying to and another thing when you're making your strokes um, try to when you're making small strokes it's not so such of so, so much of an issue but basically you've got this sort of setup here where you've got your arm okay so most people when they draw in they'll rotate this area here and that will give you so I'll just do it I'll give you an example here so if I want to draw a straight line rotating from my wrist then I get about there I can sort of follow it up and you can see it's all automatically curving if I just do a straight line like that it's going to have a curve to it and this is what the wrist does it has this curve so when you're trying to draw a straight line you can only go so far and it's very shaky so if I now rotate from this area here so now I will have more of an arc so if I just draw a line until I, that's my arc now so before it was like this with the wrist now my arc is like that and now if I've got a line over here I can quite nicely connect those two bits like this so that is another thing to practice drawing from this area now along with that I can also so here's my arc for that um, I can also draw from this area here your shoulder so you've got your wrist you've got your elbow and you've got your shoulder now with the shoulder that's the maximum you can draw so I can have a long line like this and the arc really does it's almost not visible on the screen at the moment yeah so if you need to for example you've got your horizon line like this you want to set up some perspective lines if you're using your wrist you're automatically you're going to fight the urge to curve so if I use my elbow I've got I've got decent lines and they still sort of curve at the end but if I use my shoulder then I can just lay them down like that I can go all the way across so um, those are a few little tips there so I hope you um, have a bit of inspiration there to start messing around drawing some shapes um, and getting free and loose with this pencil tool so um, yeah you can also do your parallel lines you can do long parallel lines yeah you can connect put dots you can do free dots you can do weird shapes yeah so these are all they will teach you these in design schools to get you used to using your tools okay so like this okay so that's about it for the pencil tool with some extra um, little design um, tips and tricks so I will see you on the next tool which will be about the ink brush okay speak to you later we will be
covering what I like to call the pencil brush. So last time we used the pencil tool, which is over here. And um, this can, uh, what I'm about to show you can, uh, is actually um, relevant for any of these two tools, but I don't want it to be confused with the pencil tool. It's the pencil brush, okay? So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna start with this uh, brush here, which is our normal brush, without any settings applied to it. You can see I've got this shape here. So what I'm gonna do first, I'm gonna go over here. Um, this will allow me to have my shape dynamics on, so which will allow me to have tapered lines like this, okay? Just like that, yeah. And I can make them thinner by the by the press. I can make them harder with um, as much as I press into the brush. Okay. So that's the first thing you're going to do. The second thing you're going to do is this up here. You're going to touch the opacity, which is going to allow me to have these gray lines where I can now start to build up my lines. And this is the basic what I like to call the pencil brush. Um, so you can see I'm just using a normal round brush, but I've just added these settings to it, which allow me to have these really nice light strokes where I can add pressure. And I'm also going to have my flow quite low because um, with the flow, as you make it even lower, it will become much more like a pencil, like a very soft pencil. And for things like animation, designing characters, this is really, really useful. Okay. So what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to delete all that. I'm just going to introduce a little bit to the idea of um, comics and how we're going to use these brushes. Okay. So first of all, um, what you usually have is some sort of narrative, some sort of script, or if you're making the comic yourself, just some sort of idea of what's going to happen in the comic. Um, so me personally, I just, um, I draw out my comics sort of in a rough sense. I will have a basic idea of what's going to happen, but I just sort of just start drawing it on a scrap paper just to then that will be my first draft. But usually in comics, you'll have a, a script which will be given to what's called the pencil artist. So the pencil artist will start to do what I'm doing right now. So they'll usually make these little thumbnails. And um, these thumbnails will be your basic layout. So then once the pencil artist has finished um, their drawings, then they will hand it over to the inker. And the inker will um, refine the drawings using ink. Sometimes they will add um, shadows and then that will then go over to the colorist. So there are these three, three basic um, uh, parts to making a comic. In Japan, however, um, a lot of the times the uh, manga artists will pencil and ink their own drawings and even color at times. So here I've just basically laid out a, a basic page. So say, for example, I've got this scene here and I might have some sort of uh, some sort of I'm just going to lay in the I'm just going to put my flow up a little bit. So I might have a tree over here like this Then I have another tree here. Maybe as it goes back into space, I have some hills with some, some another tree just like that. And I might have some hills going like this. Here we go, so there's a little sun there. And then I've got some clouds and my character, he might be standing here as though he's looking that way. Um, okay, so I also might have some foreground elements. This is also a very important thing to do. When you add a foreground element, it gives a lot more depth into your picture. So it's almost like you're standing behind these bushes and you're looking right out here, noticing the character, then noticing the background and it's framed by these trees here. So what I will do now, I'll just quickly show you just a quick little demo here. So I'm holding shift to make these straight lines. So first I will just start to rough in this background. This could be like your, your maybe some grass or something, some sort of hilly kind of area. And I'll get my first tree in here. Then I'll get my second tree here and I might just have one branch sticking out like that. 
and I've got this sort of hill I'll just make this hill a bit lower just over here and let's just say the, the tree is so, so big okay this is all sort of not so relevant right now but we will cover all this a bit more in detail further on in the course here are my distant hills slash mountains ish and I'll just get my eraser just rub a bit of that out so from this you can see by um, using this method see I can easily sort of erase things similar like with a pencil but I can also draw over things and it's not gonna really make much of a difference yeah so I could just see these lines over here if I want I could just sort of place some some ideas here some some foliage here and maybe I'll just keep it going like this a few grasses sticking out maybe here and there uh, something like that there we go and then over here a few more maybe some flowers yeah. bit more grass over here over here and you can see I've covered up this area where my where my character is supposed to be standing so what I might just do is just dial this back a bit just like that you can see I'm just it's, it's so easy to sort of make adjustments and edits at this stage and that is something that the pencil brush allows you to do quite nicely so now I'll just quickly rough in my character have a bit of a Thing like this maybe he's got a sword on the back the old sword master traveling sword master there okay so once i've got that going on that is my basic layout oh got put put my clouds in something like this something like that i've got my son okay so from here i can start to now add in sort of little um Parts of bits of detail, indications of detail, tree bark, etc. Over here as well. So just these smooth vertical lines, and um, over here. So I've got that. Might just add a bit under here. So trying to follow the form to create shadows here. A little bit of detail there, like that, and a bit more here maybe. So one thing that you also want to do is make sure uh, when we go over this again, which I'll show you, is make sure your edges are really nice. So the edges would be that is an edge, for example, that is an edge. These are edges here. So what I'm going to do now, now that I've got that in, I can go again over with my pencil brush. And this time I will just go over the outside of my lines. And what that's going to allow me to do, and you can see I'm putting more emphasis on the detail. So what that's going to allow me to do is have my shapes, my masses of shapes read nicer. So now you're looking at this and it will be, so you can see here, this is another thing that I want to say. You see that there? That's something you want to avoid when two things meet like that or just touch like that. That's called when two things kiss and you don't want that. So what you'd rather have is something like this where the shapes will overlap or something like this where there's a clear distance. OK, so here this is probably a bit too close. So what I could do is I could either shorten it by making it that big or I could elongate in it to make it make sure that it's much further. So here we go. And I'm just going to sort of here as well just going to basically run through this quickly so here we can see and I'm adding a bit of detail in the middle here and I'm just going to now continue here a little bit of a rush going on don't want to spend too much time in this okay so there we go so I'm just going around all the edges just adding bit more definition on the edges of my shapes which is going to allow me to 
read the image better. So here we go. There we go. In fact, I don't like that line. What I might do with this tree is just make it a bit more wobbly. You can see here that's happening again. So what I will do, I'll just do something like this. In fact, I'll just get my eraser. Just make that happen there and then just move this right down there. Um, it's good when shapes overlap because that shows you depth as well. So I spoke before about having a nice amount of depth and that is given by this this uh, foliage in the front here. So I'm just going to now start to rough out a bit of the floor texture. And then again, I'm going to come over here and just define my edges a bit. And if I wanted to, I could have a bit of this going on. That's no problem. And again, over here. So as you go further back, you want your lines to be a little less heavy than in the front. And you can always um, double back again over into your f uh, the first objects and make the lines stronger. So there's more of a there's more of a contrast in the line weight. So here we've got this going on. I might just get rid of this hill here because I don't want it to compete with my character. So here we go. And I'm just going to lightly put in a bit on the clouds. So you can see this took me hardly any time at all. But um, usually this would be quite a lot bigger than this picture that I'm drawing. So now again, I'll just add a bit more strength to these areas here. There we go. So this is how you use the pencil brush. And um, yeah, so have a go. Um, make some little backgrounds or just draw some shapes and try to start with a very light shape and then come again over with darker shapes to make your shapes and your backgrounds read. Okay, so there we go. Um, so you can see the front areas here, there's a very light, uh, very thick lines. Then as it goes back, it gets a bit thinner. Then as it goes right back, it gets even thinner. But because I've gone over these shapes, they all read. You can see everything. And then your detail can be extremely very thin like this. Okay. There we have it. The pencil brush. Yeah. So again, just to run over it, all I did is I had a, n a normal brush like this. And I just added the shape dynamics and I added the opacity. And now I've got a pencil like brush and you can mess around with the flow. If you want a softer line, you can use lower flow. If you don't really if you're a bit more confident and you want to just make things quick, then you can just make your flow up and you can see. So with the flow low, to show you how to get to a black, you can see how many strokes it's taking. So about there. But with the flow up, you can see I'm I'm already there. Yeah. So, okay, thank you very much. And I'll see you next lesson, which will be about the ink brush. Okay, thank you. We are now focusing on what we I like to call the render brush. So, um, what's going on? Okay, I was on my, I was on my eraser there. So here we go. Um, if I just take this back, so I've got this shape, I'm just gonna also make this back to normal here and as you can see I've got something like this so what we're gonna do for the render brush I'm gonna take my flow down again sorry my smoothing down so as you can see I've got my basic brush shape here and I can uh, yeah so I'll just get rid of those so that is um, what we'll start with so for the render brush we want the opacity section on yeah but you can see that when I'm starting to add shapes, yeah, if I zoom in a bit, I'm holding space to drag that around. So you can see we're getting these sort of overlapping sort of um, marks here, which is, 
you know, like here and here and here and here. And that's something that we don't want for rendering. You want a nice smooth transition from shades. And so what I'll do is I will just get my brush back and we've got that on. So now we're going to need to have a flow right down. And now we can start to get more of a, a smooth transition. And this allows us to really transition through the shades. Okay. And the lower you put it, the better it is. It almost becomes like an airbrush. So that is our render brush. Okay. So what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to show you with this example, just what we can do with the render brush. So I'll make another layer. Um, I'll put this underneath. So you can see I dragged that layer under here. And I'm going to start by just, um, just giving a, a rough wash of my whole canvas here like that. So this is important. Um, a lot of people just, um, also what people do is they will just fill the whole layer in, in gray. So I could do that as well, but I'm just going to do this way for now. And here is where you start to now add some definition. I'm going to put a bit more flow because I think that's not enough. Yeah. So I'm now going to just start going over the shapes that are in the foreground that are closer to your vision. And I'm going to add darker tones to them. So you can see I'm just adding darker values. And some people prefer also to start from the back and work their way forward. Other people like to start from the forward, from, from close up and work their way back. Uh, sorry, and work their way into the distance. Um, me personally, I sort of mix it up really. I don't really have one rule. Um, so here I'm just adding some black. You can make your brush bigger to get bigger areas. So in the beginning, you will start off sort of very loosely, very loosely getting different shades and tones here, different shades really of your black. Here we go. And you can just start adding more here. And as it now transitions into the four, into the mid area, I will start to use less. So I'm going to start to use less here. Just a little bit of tone. So this is just adding tone to my to my picture here. Might want him to have maybe some sort of dark grey and his hair will be quite dark. The hilt of the sword will be dark there. Goes on like this. So then um, as I carry on, you can just keep adding tone, especially in the places I've indicated have shadow. Yeah. And now for the sky, what I would want to do is then I'll press D to get back my black and white and I will just go back uh, by pressing X so that switches them around and I can just add some lighter values for the sky. Okay. So this is one way that you can start to render your backgrounds. And this is a really useful brush. So as you can see, I'm being very light with it. Um, I'm hardly actually pressing down at all. So um, just adding a bit more here and there. And the sun will obviously be the brightest. And it will come on like this. So I can now press Alt and I can pick up tones that I've already made and I'm just trying to blend them. So I'd probably have a darker shade at the top just to um, frame the picture a bit. And then I'll pick up this white over here and start to work on the clouds. So for the clouds, I'm just going to basically do these circular movements and that will give me an underside, which is in shadow because clouds are sort of like 3D objects floating through the sky. So you want to give an indication that there is light and shadow on the clouds as well. So here you can see just quickly I've added all these different tones, these shades, and I can then start to double back over 
and add a bit more definition to to the values that I've got filling in the blanks yeah and so um, that's about it with the render brush okay so we can just do that just giving it a bit more tone here and then I can sort of start to add highlights so if I make this much smaller I can then start to go over adding little bits of light so this is a bit like painting with light so I'm going to add a bit to the leaves to the foliage yeah and this is going to also make it seem like there's more form going on so here as well just adding a bit of light so this is just a really rough just showing you how you can take a pencil drawing and add some some uh, shading to it okay so that's that so just um, like that. So I might want to add a bit more dark in my foreground, especially in the corners, just so that it really shows that it's in the foreground here. So you can see I'm just sort of really loosely dropping in these tones here. And that's about it. So I'd probably leave it there for now. And in this area here, in this area here. And now I'm just going to get my marquee tool. Just select the outside, select the outside, select the outside here and here. So I'm holding shift to add to my selection and just press delete. Boom. There is our tonal exploration into this um, into this picture so you can see there's major brush strokes here and stuff like that so what you would then do is sort of reduce the size of the brush pick up the tone and then start to work in these smaller details of tone okay so the idea is that whether you work from the, the back of the image to the front of the image, you start with bigger strokes and then you will just start to reduce the size of your brush until you start to get all the sort of definition that you want. So here I could start adding a bit of light to this area here and here, just under it like that. And obviously these bits here as well, I could add some light to these areas just so that they they stand out a bit. Okay, so that is it for the rendering section, the rendering brush, and I hope you learned something so you can have a go yourself. A couple exercises you can do is um, get a black shape, a shade, and you can just start to start to work from white to black and try and get your transition smooth you see there we go uh yeah so that's about it so um you could also sorry just a couple more exercises um you could also incorporate everything we've done so say you get a basic shape like this um something like that yeah, and now you can sort of start to go, you could ink it, so you can get your ink brush. So if I click that, take the opacity off, put that in. You can, I'm just, just get my ink brush one second, my flow is low, that's why. So now I've got my ink, so now I can ink the shape like this. weird kind of shape that wouldn't really stand up and then can now reduce my flow back down quite low take off the dynamics put on the opacity and then start to render it okay so this is these are the sort of um, three main brushes 
So I um, hope you enjoyed that. Have a go messing around. And um, the next one we're going to talk about is the airbrush. Okay, so thank you very much and I'll see you next time. Today we will be running over the ink brush. Okay, so uh, in the previous lesson we spoke about the different stages of um, making a comic. So you start with your pencil layout, something like this. And then you will uh, send it over to the next department or sometimes the same one. And they will ink the, the, the comic. Okay, so that's what we're going to do today. So if I select my brush tool, here we go, I'll just press B. And I've uh, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to revert the settings back to a normal brush. So that's it. This is with no settings on at all. And you can see I've got this. Uh, this sort of hard line just like that and what I will do for my ink brush I'll just put the shape dynamics on and there you can see I've got a tapered brush okay and I can go from soft to thin I can do that yeah and uh, also what you can do this is a preference I don't usually do it myself but you can come over here to where your brush settings are you can just slightly squash your brush here and just turn it to the side a little bit and then you've got this you've got a slightly different type of shape here and this is good because um, it gives your brush um, just a little bit of variation when you do certain shapes yeah so these sort of shapes here like that you get this different kind of thick to thin okay you can also mess around with your smoothing so you can put that up just a bit this will compromise your um your computer loading so here we go you can see those lines are a lot smoother now okay so that's what we're going to do uh, so what i'm going to show you just quickly i'm just going to ink some of this drawing here so when we zoom in you can see that it's still quite rough and what would normally happen is you would do this uh, type of pencil layout much bigger. So it would probably take out, take up more of the page. So I'm just going to enlarge it a little bit. So just press Control T to transform. And here we go. So I press Enter and now I'm there. So what I will do, um, I will just go over here and I will just take down the fill. You can also take down the opacity. It's up to you. And that will allow me to have um, to see the image more faintly. Okay, so I'll make a new layer here, and I'll just start to use this new brush to just give some. Now, in this stage as well, you might want to add a few little parts here and there, just to so you can see here these shapes here so they're kind of the same size so I might want to just just variate the size of everything and just give it a lot more variation so here I might want to just again just take your time with this and with your grasses so if I was to draw like that that's okay but what would probably be better is if I sort of just taper it at the end there. And traditionally this would be done with actually dip pens, so ink pens which you dip into ink. So calligraphy pens really. And um, this is really big in Japanese animation as well. So if you get a chance to have a look at some of these books where it's just uh, they haven't added the color. And you can see how nicely they they design their shapes, yeah. Just like this. So I'm just going over everything. But this is also going to be a much slower. It it will be a slower process. So you you you're not going to be. This is where you're not loose anymore. You're really defining your shapes. Use Control Z as well to go back if you need and yeah that's that's really what this ink brush is about and also what they will sometimes do in comics is they will 
add the shading. So that could either be through cross hatching or it could be through actual um, shadow shapes, which we'll talk about as we progress. So, so you see this grass is quite fat, so I might just make it a bit thin here. And I could also just, using my pen pressure, just come around like that. But I will just... So you can see that to get the right line is a task. Um, but I would recommend actually picking up some black ink and having a go at you doing it the old fashioned way because really it's quite therapeutic and as you do it you actually sort of feel the paper scraping it's very it's much better than in my opinion than drawing with fine liners um, you, you really feel the texture of the paper and you it just improves your inking ability as well so once you if you do a few pictures with real ink and then you come over back to Photoshop you, you feel like you've just you know leveled up somehow so here you go I'm just going to continue here so the edges are very important so I'm just making sure I've got everything just like that and really cleanly and just adding some few little articles here a few little details and here is where I can go a bit more you know just to so I've got these shapes here just want to add a bit of that here and now you can see I'm sort of getting a bit thinner with my lines um, which is what we spoke about before about how your lines should as they as the background Receive as it, as it goes further off into the distance, you want your lines to be a bit thinner and continue to get thinner as they go through. So um, that's about it, really. Um, I will just do a bit more of this, um, just so that we can have something to work with on the next lesson. Here we go. That's a flower. Okay, and you can also mess around with using different types of brushes with these settings. So here we go. Just going to make sure this goes nicely behind these shapes. Here we go. Okay, and I'm just going to quickly going to do the rest a bit quicker. Here we go. Just got this tree here. And um, here is where you can also add a little bit of um, a little bit more detail in the edges. So before this was completely round, but I just wanted to make it a little bit more wobbly, just like that. So and then one hill just comes down like this, and one hill goes down here. Um, yeah, so I've still got quite a lot of foliage to do. This is probably one of the most time consuming parts of drawing, but it's also the most rewarding because when you then turn off your layer, you start to see a neat drawing taking place here. So I'm just going to carry on. Add in a bit of this texture here. Yeah, I can add a knot if I want, like that. And that's about it. Another good thing is to um, mess around with different types of textures. Can you make something look like a tree, observe something, and have a go at trying to emulate that? Here we go, just adding a bit more lines in here, just to I'm sort of speeding through this now because I don't want this lesson to be too long. I've basically covered everything that I wanted to say, but I need something fairly finished. In fact, you know, I don't like this area here. All right. 
So you can see that when you try to rush things, it does not always work and it ends up putting you back in the long run. So here we go, there's the rest of this tree. Have some interlinking lines to simulate the bark. Just add in a bit more here. There we go, nearly there. So this flower sort of comes out like that, goes here. And I'll put my sun in, get a little bit of the cloud. Here we go. There we go. So now with this sword, so with the sword, I'm going to have a little holder going around like this, add a bit more texture to simulate a cloak, I might have one sleeve here, one sleeve here like this, this area here I'm not too happy with, so I'm just going to there, just indicate his feet there, um, and there's a few more lines I think, just to Show a little bit of texture here on the hills, a little bit of shadow, something here with this tree. And again, so these sort of lines here when you're inking, this is what inkers would do to add sort of shadow and shading. So they'll just add certain lines like this. It's a bit like cross hatching, but because I'm not crossing, it's not really cross hatching it's just like adding texture so also what i might want to do is just reduce my brush size to get these bits here yeah just so it's easier for me to make really small lines here we go and that's about it so then to finish up i will just um make a hard line around the edge maybe not that fat or maybe about there There we go. Okay, so that is basically, I could also just, you know, add a little bit of dimension to these, these blades of random blades of grass, just by giving a little bit of a central point here. I could also go as wild as I want with these grasses. I could sort of have clumps of grass. I could have different types of bushes. If you do a lot of reference, you'll be able to find different types of bushes and grasses, which will add more believability to your um, to your pictures. I'm just going to add a little bit of shade in here. And if I turn off my pencil layer, that's what I've got there. OK, so this is about the ink brush. So I hope you enjoyed that. Have a go, mess around and you can also sort of double back over your shapes, give certain uh, certain areas a bit more line weight you can see that sort of change in the look of everything so you give a little bit more line weight to the bottom of the shapes just like this yeah just like that and here like this there we go and that's about it so i hope you enjoyed that um have a go at making some layouts some backgrounds things like that um i could also um if i want to you know carry on with the detail in this but we'll just leave it there so thank you very much and i'll see you in the next lesson which will be about the render brush now i can also go with my eraser and tame some of these lines here like this so it's a very it's a very um it's a very time consuming and and um you have to have a lot of fidelity so you could i'll show you a few exercises that you can mess around with just before i go so you can do um again your your connecting lines 
you can do your um, trying to manage the smoothness of your lines, different types of lines, yeah, different sh ways of lines, and then also you can try things like this where you're just trying to add on to lines. You can do things like this where then you try and add some weight to one side of the line, like that. Then you could do things where you can make small objects. So I could just draw a basic shape like this. And then I could sort of make that go over my line like this. Um, I could also, another thing which is a good one is if you, if I say get a grey, let's just use a grey here, and just make a shape like this. And I sort of start carving it out with this eraser. Yeah. Like that. Okay, just like this. I'm not spending much time on it here. Then I go back to my brush, then I get my press D to go back to the black and white. And then you just start tracing the edges. This is a really good exercise. So you can see that wasn't so good, so I can go back. There we go. So by doing these exercises, you will get a lot more brush fidelity. And you can try and do things where you just, you know, you might just want to do something like that. Something like this. This is another way you can make clean lines where I'm just basically not worried about overshooting my lines. And then I can go back with the eraser and erase away. And another thing you can do is then thicken up your lines like this. Like overly thick and then use your eraser to just dial it back. Like that. Okay, so those are some exercises and some ideas. So I hope you enjoyed that and I'll speak to you next time on the next call, on the next episode. Thank you very much. See you later. Hi again. Congrats on getting this far. I hope you're enjoying the tutorial and already learning new skills. If you want to check out the extended version of the course, head to skillademia.com where you will find our full comic book creation beginner to advanced course with more than 65 lectures and lots of projects to complete. Now let's continue. So I'm just going to now uh, explain to you about the airbrush so the airbrush is quite a powerful tool in Photoshop so just press B to get to my brush and there we go that's your normal brush so I'll just take off this this is everything we'll this is what your normal brush is like so if I right click on the canvas so it's important on the canvas if you you can also basically you can also select up here but if you right click on off the canvas you can change the background color like so um, if you right click on the canvas you can select your brushes now this has to be done through the brush tool okay so um, I'm just going to select this soft round from my basic brushes and um, over here this is a you can see that there's one with pressure sensitivity soft round yeah pressure opacity we just want to deal with the um, soft round here and we will make our edits as we need okay so the airbrush is really good from go to go from light shapes to dark shapes and transition them smoothly you see so I'll just show you here it's also good for sort of blocking in your your um, your different tonal exploration so what I could do here so I'll just get my airbrush just make it quite big and I will just start to what's going on I've got the white selected so I press D so I've got my black selected and I can put in some basic color so that's quite dark so what I'll do I'll just lay in a bit I'll get press alt select that color and now I can lay in the rest. Okay, so you can see that already it's good for just these big washes of color here. So now if I start from this from the foreground, get back my black, I can now start adding in tone. Now you can see that that's quite a lot. So what I will do is I'll take down the flow a bit here. And now it's 
a lot more manageable. Okay, so I can now start adding in various shapes. So with the um, airbrush, normally you don't want your size um, dynamics on when you're doing these big sort of areas. But then say for with the grass, for example, so I'll just add a bit in this tree here. So you can see I'm already starting to get a nice value um, read here. So I'll just add a bit to the tree here, a bit over here, a little bit there, a little bit here. So you can see this is looking kind of messy at the moment, but I can also, if I reduce the size, I can just start to pick up colors and start to work it in a bit. Here we go. So again here, I might add a little bit here. And there we go. So usually you don't use the size dynamics, um, but if I, I can in certain situations, for example, with this grass. So if I use a size dynamic, instead of looking like this, it will look like this here. So sometimes with smaller objects like grass, this could be more useful. Yeah, so you can see I can just start adding in different tones, sorry, different shades here, just to accentuate the form here and to just add these hard to reach areas, just like that. Um, but mainly what the um, airbrush is really good for, which I like it for, is the sky. So here, at the top of the page here. So I might just get a darker area here. So I'll take this off now. Okay, and I'll start to touch this sky in here like that. Just to give it a bit of a border. Here we go. And I'll pick up this white and I'll start to add a bit of light in the sky as well. So you can see that by doing that, you can get these really cool transitions from dark to light. Yeah, and I can just sort of work it up a bit like that as well. Get some in my... And you can see how quick that was for me to do. And I can then go back with my highlights and just start adding it in here. So, and that's basically the airbrush tool. So um, if you look at this guy here, I'll just work it a little bit more. You don't want it to be too dark. I just want a little bit of dark around the top. So if I show you that sky here, compared with the previous one we did, you can see that the transition is much smoother. Yeah. So that is um, the airbrush tool. So some things that you can do to uh, mess around with the airbrush tool. So I'm just going to now press M for the marquee tool. I've got my circular marquee tool here, so I will cover this in a second, but basically if I go over here, click and hold, I've got a circular one or a rectangular one. So I just want to use my rectangular one just to go around the edges. Just like that. And I'm holding shift to add to my selection. And I will just get rid of all that around the edge. There we go. So you can see how quick it is to just get these tonal reads for your for your art um it does look a bit blotty sometimes but by zooming out again making your airbrush a bit bigger you can start to get rid of some of those bits there and i just it's also good um used in conjunction with the previous ver uh, way so if i add that on now you can see that it's, if I take it out, add it in, it gives a bit of depth there. And you can sort of use that as your base and then make another layer and then go to your render brush and start to add in finer details. So a um, couple exercises you can do. I'll just get rid of all of this. Just go over, I'll use this layer, not that layer. I will use this layer. So you can go to your colors and you can say, for example, if I just get this marquee tool again and I just make a little shape here. So I can now select my airbrush 
and I need to select a layer that is active and I can select maybe a red and I can start to work that in there so you can see I've got different variations of the red as well going on and then I can maybe get a yellow orange like that start to put that in here yeah and then I can get a yellow so let's make it a little bit more orangey a bit brighter and here we go so you can create these really nice transitions and when you're using um, when you're making comics and stuff you can make selections so I'll cover this as well later but basically I can now sort of make a selection here let's just say that's a good looking figure and maybe he's got one hand in the pocket maybe he's got one hand on the old sword there there we go maybe make that a little bit of a tip to the sword and then I can sort of start if I press Control H I can hide that and I can start adding in and I can sort of add some dark so you can really sort of start playing with the levels of of your gradients and stuff you can really start having fun with it so I suggest have a go at making certain shapes like this I could do another one here we go um, I'll just grab the yellow so here we go like this a bit of the red over here doing more of a diagonally diagonal one here forget my can make any kind of shape like that and then start messing around where I put in different colors in and you can mess around with different colors you can sort of go to maybe I want some blue in there randomly and there we go yeah so have a go I'm messing around with the airbrush um, as I said it comes in very useful when you're doing actual pictures but when you're coloring images as well it's very useful like see here I could have um, had a design of a character and then just do a sort of wash so you've got a basic gradient going over the character after I've done all my rendering and it gives a, a bit of um, a bit more depth and it gives it a bit more richness so uh, yeah that's it for the airbrush tool hope you enjoyed <laughs> We've covered quite a lot of the basics we're going to continue with the basics today and um, what we're dealing with now is the lasso tool and the selection tool well selection um, yeah the selections okay so what we've got here if you press L you'll get this tool over here this is the lasso tool and here is our selection tool as well we can make selections and here we can make lasso shapes okay so what I'm going to do quickly I'm just going to make my brush quite big I'm going to give it a black color right now it's selecting the um, round brush I'm just going to get the hard brush take off the opacity now I've got a hard brush there so I'm going to press L get my lasso tool and this is what I'm basically showing you today so we can create shapes like this and we can fill them in okay so with the lasso tool a couple of things you're going to want to know is that basically um so let's get rid of that if i make a selection say that's my selection you'll get these ants what they call ants going around the edge so if i press ctrl d that makes a d selection okay so i press this ctrl d now if i press ctrl h or command H on a Mac it will hide the selection so the selection is still there and I can just paint it like that okay so this is um, a very powerful tool when creating images for design for um, all, all kind of things for for just designing your objects that you might have in your comic also you can make backgrounds you can do it pretty much a lot with this tool here so what I'm going to quickly show you just an example of that so that is my selection there if I select a white I can start to well, I've deselected okay so let's go back a few steps okay 
So I'll make this shape here. Here we go. I'll press Control H to hide it. And I will select a D, uh, press D to get my black. And that is my shape that I've got there. So now if I press Control H, you can see it's still selected. So I'll go back to my lasso tool. And if I press Shift, hold Shift, then I can actually add to that shape. So because it's still hidden. So I'll just add, what's going on here? There you go. And I'm adding bits to my shape. Okay. And then I can go back to my brush I can hide the selection and I can add more. So this is very cool. And, and also what I can do is I can make another, I'll make another shape here. Okay. So say I want to just carve that bit off. I can press control. I can hold alt and now I'm able to cut into the shape. Okay. Like that. And I get my brush control H to hide and I can draw that shape. Okay. So what I can also do while I'm still selecting it, you can see I press control H to show it and I'll press control H again to hide it. So I can go here and turn on the opacity, get a white, and now I can start to can start to shade within that shape. Yeah. So if I put my flow down, so now I can start to really shade this shape and I can get these cool effects like this. Now this comes uh, real, this will come in really handy when we start to design objects and start to paint characters. So you can see here that is just a random shape. Now with this top shape here, you can see that it's not selected anymore. But if I press W, that will get me the magic wand tool. But there's also a few different tools with this here. So it might be selected on one of these. You want to go to the wand. So now I can click that and get my selection back if I want it. So I'm, I don't really want it. So I'm going to press Control D to deselect. I'll get my lasso tool back. And now what I can do is I can start to go over this. And this is something you can practice as well. So I can just start making these shapes here like that. And now I'll get back to my brush, hide the selection. I'll pick up this gray here and I'll make my brush a bit bigger. And now I'll be able to start getting in different levels of tone. And I can start adding some highlights here, some highlights here. And now, as you can see, I'm using my render brush, but I could also get my um, airbrush. And this is much, um, much better for rendering in this way. Yeah, so if I just revert it back to a dark color here, and I've got the flow down low, so that's why it's taken a long time to render it. But now I can just, here we go can start to get these cool looking gradients. Okay. Um, also, uh, just to note, uh, basically, some of these brushes in the um, general brush section, they will have different, um, different um, properties. So you can see here, this is soft round pressure size. So that means that the pressure on my pen will affect the size of it. So I'll just quickly show you here. So if I you can see that it's tapering. So if I get a black, make it a bit smaller, you can see that I'm getting these smaller edges. So with this particular um, technique of rendering shapes, you want just a regular soft round because that will just give you a smooth, a smooth um, shading across your shapes. Okay. So if I just, um, just delete all of that. So now I will go back to my, um, my lasso tool and I'm just going to start a little shape here. So you can see by holding shift, I'm adding extra bits to my shape. And now I'm getting what's starting to look a bit like some sort of aircraft. Um, yeah. 
So now what I'll do is I'll get my hard round, selected black, I'll hide the shape, take off my opacity pressure sensitivity, and I've got my shape there. So now I can get my lasso tool again, and I can start to, I'll select my soft round, hide the selection, control H, and now I can start to, and you can see that the, the circle of the brush isn't necessarily where the effect will stop. Yeah, so you can see I've started to sketch in a window there or something. So by doing this, you're able to add dimension to your shapes. Okay, this is another thing that the uh, lasso tool is really good for. So here you go. And I'm going to just select this gray here because I don't want it to be as light as the window. So you can see there. So now this is what we do a lot when we're designing um, different objects. So here we go. This is some sort of spaceship or some sort of um, flying vehicle of some sort, some sort of sci-fi thing. So here we go. I'm just going to take a bit of that out. Just going to add a few. So by take by holding alt, I'm removing bits of my shape. And now I will select a white. And there we go. Some windows. Okay. Um, so what this can, what you can do here is start to design objects, start design different things that you might have in your comics. And this is a really easy way to design them. You know, it's quite free. So if I just now, then what I can do with this whole shape, I can press V, move it over, and start a new one. So for example, I might want to start with a kind of rounded shape. Might give this one a bit of a jagged back. And then I might have the seating area protrude out of the shape. And now I might put some guns in there. There. Or I could even have a wing coming out like that. And I just get this here. We'll do a lot more of this later, but I'm just showing you how you can use this um, selection tool with the brush tool to make a really to make really easy readable shapes. Okay, so here now I'm gonna think what part is facing up. What part is facing up? There we go. So I've got that. I'll just get this gray again. And I, oh it didn't pick up that gray. There we go. And I'll start to do that, you see? And I can also go back into this get my black again, start to carve out bits of that shape here. So then I'll get the top of this wing, get that, control H. And as you can see, it's starting to look like this. So from here, we've got this sort of diagonal, I've got this diagonal shape like that coming round here then it will sort of go under that's what the shadow is showing and then it will come out like that so we can also you know accentuate that side that shape by drawing lines like this yeah and I'll just take away that bit there that bit there just so I can draw it easier and I'll get a white and I'll just, so the other thing that I didn't show you before is that if I've got a white here, you can see it's straight to white. I'll just hide the selection so we can see what we're doing straight to white, but you might want to work a bit slower than that. So the numbers along the top of your keyboard. So if I press one, now you can see the opacity has gone down to 10%. So that will allow me to paint a softer version there. Yeah, and if I press, for example, six, that will make it brighter. If I press, uh, and that's gone to 60%, if I press six, 
If I press with zero, it'll go to 100%, so I'll get my white back. Okay, so this is sort of some of the ways that we can start to create um, different objects, different props, different vehicles, and we can also do it with characters. So I'll just quickly put that in, and I will just get a little bit of this seating area, and I'm just going to hide that, get some of that gray, put that there, and then I'll put a bit of... So that's too bright, so I've just turned down the opacity a bit. And I'll just get a bit more of this black here. You can see I'm starting to shade it. Okay, so that again, there's another, there's another design. So I can now use this lasso tool to go all around this design, press V, and I can move it over here. So in this way, we can make a whole page of random shapes that we turn into spaceships or vehicles or whatever so this one right here uh, i might add a little thing here um not sure what this is going to be at the moment so it's similar to looking at clouds and having a look and seeing what you can see so here i'm going to add this bit here uh, in fact i cut a bit out which i actually prefer and here what i'll do is i'll add this circle now what, what you're going to see I do is I go back around this circle and now I've got an actual circle selection. Whereas if I was just to do a circle, I would f get a full circle without a middle part there. So by doing a circle like this, coming round and coming back here. So let's do that again. Can get, do a circle like this, come back round and do that. I can get natural circle selection. So now I'll again get my black and I'll fill that in. So now you can see I'm, I'm using low opacity. I've got 10% over there. I'll hide the shape. You can see that you can even start. Yeah, you can start bringing them in slowly even. You can start with a bit of a softer start. Yeah, so now I've got my selection so I'll just get my little windows in there. H to hide, get the white. And this time it's going to be softer to come in. And now you can see what's gonna happen here. Don't know, so I'm just gonna start cutting out shapes of this. Here. Yeah, and this one here. So maybe this is going straight down and these are up to the side maybe or in fact i could even make those shadow areas yeah so now what's happening is this is sorry about that so this is coming straight down then it's going out and then it's coming straight down again Okay, so there we have it. A little bit of how to use the lasso tool. And um, you can practice this yourself by just trying to make a bunch of different shapes. Just gonna go a bit, I'm gonna hide the selection. You can make a bunch of shapes and seeing what could these shapes be. So even right now, I'm not sure that looks like some sort of flying vehicle. Maybe it's from another planet or something. Um, so now I've selected that, now I can move it, and then I can make one more. Um, so I'll just make this one quick. Here we go. In fact, let's just make this one a straight up car. Okay, and I'll just add a bit of dimension to it there. Okay, that's good enough. Just gonna rush this one through, so here we go. Let's get back to the darker colors. So I've hidden the selection there. Might wanna cut a bit of that shape off. So I can select that as well and press delete and that will go away. All right, so that's basically how to use the lasso tool. A little bit long on that one, but it's a very important tool and we'll use it a lot in this um, 
when we start to do a few more intricate shapes and stuff like that. Um, so here I'm just going to add a bit of that. And then I can just add a bit here, add a bit there. Maybe I want to pull out some of these. So you can see here I've made a shape, now I'm just going to cut into it. And again, just here. And maybe, yeah, that'll be it. So I'll hide that, get the black. And then I've now got a door, got some little rims, some little spoilers. Some little spoiler would be over here. Could add a spoiler if I want. So my spoiler might have it some sort of weird spoiler like this. And then I'll just get the black, hide that, then just paint that in. Okay. And that's about it, really. And that's how to use the lasso tool, selection tool how to use your selection. So one of the things that might happen is that when you try and draw any time in Photoshop, you'd be like, what's going on? What's going on? But if you press control H, you've got something selected. So if you're one of the things that you might want to do, if you're always draw, if you're trying to draw and you're not getting anything out, first thing to do, press control H, sorry, control um, D to deselect anything you got, select anything you got, and then you can just paint again. Okay, so that's that. Um, that is the selection tool. So um, hope you enjoyed that. Today I am going to show you a couple cool little things. Um, so let me just get a hard brush here. There we go. Select my black. Okay. And I'm going to put that there. Make my opacity 100%. So now I've got a nice line draw uh, ink style brush. So one of the things that um, you might end up needing to do is that you need to transform things. So for example, if I've got a, I'm just gonna roughly sketch out this guy here like this. He's gonna be standing like that. Okay, let's just say that is a human figure-ish. Okay, so here we go. All right. So the transform tool allows you to basically, um, it allows you to change this, your, your, it allows you to tra yeah, transform your selections. Okay. So I'm going to just show you that really quickly here. So if I press control T now you can see that's come about. So what I can do here, I can make it bigger, I can rotate it, I can make it, now, if you, in Photoshop now, it does this, but if you hold down shift, you can just make it a bit wider, you can make it taller, okay? And now, if you hold down control, you can skew it, okay? So this is really useful when we're doing things in perspective. Um, so you can see that that's what I started with and that's what I ended with is completely different. Now. One of the things that um, you might want to do is when you're transforming things, you can also, if you press Control T, you can also hide your selections, by the way, like that, Control H. I'll bring it back. Now, if you right click over that, you've got all your different tools here. Okay, you can also flip horizontal, which is a very useful one. We're going to do that quite a lot. So by flipping things horizontally, it gives you a different, a completely new picture of, of, of what you're doing. It almost refreshes your design sense. So you can see here, might want to just take a bit of this shoulder out. Yeah, you can see this uh, this leg is much bigger. I might want to give it a bit more legs over here. Okay, this one's a bit longer. But uh, anyway, that's all, you know, this is just a quick sketch, quick design. But what I'm gonna, the reason why this is also really cool, this selection tool, is that when you're doing things in perspective, it becomes a very useful tool. So for example, I'm just gonna move this guy over here. So I'm going to now just quickly show you, this is gonna be really rough. So here we go, just doing some perspective lines here. So we'll cover this as well a bit later. So this is a one point perspective and I've got my grid set up there. So I'll just put a few up here as well. So by pressing L, I can select this whole thing. 
okay and I can press control uh, control X to cut it if I can press control uh, V now it will paste it on a new layer and if I want it in the exact same place I press control shift V and it will paste it exactly where it was before so now what I'll do I'll just take this down a bit all right so i'm just doing that now i'm going to make a new layer this is all really quickly just running through this so say for example i have a street coming down like this i'm just going to move it like that all right so and then i've got a building coming up here like that okay okay here we go and then these guys will go that way all right so this is my basic um building here i'm gonna just do that as well okay so let's say that's a building right now it just looks like a box all right so what i can do um i'm just gonna quickly show you this this is also uh, quite a nifty little tool it's called the um symmetry tool so on a new layer i will just hold on i need to press so once you've once you do your selection you press enter and that will be your symmetry tool now you can draw in symmetry so i'll make a new layer and i'm just going to now just rough in some windows like this boom 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 mind you this is all just about the um the um transform tool okay so this is i'm just using this as an example to quickly get some basic shapes in so i'll just call these my windows okay there we go and i've got one there one there and i'll make i'll make these like that these like that okay so this could be sort of like this area here so what i'm gonna do i might have to actually extend this oh, yeah, my symmetry stone so to get the symmetry off you click this again symmetry off so now I'm just going to bring back my perspective lines and I'm just going to follow this building a bit further down just like that and this was wrong anyway where's this okay that's all on the wrong layer which is fine so here that's what I want so I'm just going to get rid of that top this whole thing here this whole thing here this whole thing here in a way just starting again really so I'm just going to do this so it's going to be a bit wider get to that line and now I've got the front of my building so what I can do with this now so that's my windows so I can get the transform tool I can move it over here and now either by control and distort and oh no, sorry skew you can now get these lines so not skew it is distort so right click distort and get these lines can just put them in place here and there you go I've got a shop front in perspective okay and that you and now then you, you've got a real strong basis to design over so obviously that looks because I used quite f thick lines it doesn't match the lines but what I could do as well to do that quickly I can just c control hold control while I'm transforming and just put that in like this so while I'm holding control, I'm able to skew it and I can move the vertical as well, just like that. And then I can just line that all up. So that looks a bit better. So I could have also, if I get press V and then hold Alt, I can copy that to a new layer, just like this. Now I've got two of these guys here. So what I can do here, if I just select these, this one and this one, so on the top, I'll press Control E, which will merge those two layers, and I will do. Con uh, I will press Control T again to transform. Hold Control, and now when I line these up, it should look a little bit better. But you could see that I just done that all very quickly, and this can work as well for all kinds of repeated patterns. So I could make myself. I'm just going to use the symmetry again. Um, I could make myself some paving stones. So if I hold shift, I can get these straight lines. Yeah, just like that. 
and then I can just do, hold shift. I'm holding shift to make these really straight lines. I don't normally use shift actually because I prefer organic looking lines. I'm just going to remove these bits here and you can see that's almost looking slightly like paving stones. Okay, so then I can just copy this. Oh, I've got the whole thing there. So again, uh, select it, control X, control V, and it's on new layer. Now I can just repeat these like that again, and again, and then I can select that layer, control E to merge down, control E to merge down. Now that's all on one layer. So if that was my paving stones, I could just put them in place here. I'll rotate them. And by holding shift, you can rotate at these hard angles. And then what I can do now is put them slightly in place, hold control. And now I can warp them into perspective. Okay, that is a very powerful tool that we, we might be using quite a lot. So let's see. So what we would need to do is, as you can see, this line at the top is making it so I cannot get them in line. But what you want to do is make sure that all your verticals are in line with your verticals and all your diagonals are in line with your diagonals on your perspective grid. So now I'll just... Uh, now I've still got the symmetry selected. Take that off. Now I'll press E to get my eraser and I'll just erase out these bits here. And you can see that you can easily drop in these different things. And if I just now merge those together, so it's all that's all on one layer. Can merge that together, so that's all on one layer. And turn down the opacity, get rid of my perspective grid. Now I can just go in with my um, a new layer on top with my brush, my line, my ink brush, and then I can start putting in the details using this as a guide. Yeah, so when you want to draw something really quickly or you want to get a nice background in really quickly, but you don't want to spend all the time just measuring all the different objects, you can draw things flat and warp them into perspective. So that is another thing that this um, transform tool is really useful for in comics. Yeah, so if I just now take get rid of that, you can see it's starting to look more like a window or series of windows. So I'll just do this bit really quickly. So by holding shift and clicking, I'm getting straight lines. So if I do that, that's a straight line ish. If I select that, make a dot, hold shift, then I get another line. And if this is on, if it's off, sorry, then I'll get a really straight line. So I could just sort of make this really small, come down here, come down here, come down here. And you can really quickly start fleshing out scenes. Yeah. So that is what I wanted to show you mainly with the transform tool. So if I get rid of that, you can see it's starting to shape up. OK, so that's about that for the transform tool. Um, it's really useful as well, like in the previous um, the previous page, which was these shapes. If I now go back to these with the tra uh, transform tool control. So I could basically just do contract, uh, contr select the layer, control T, select all of that and make them smaller. So then I've got more space to do more designs. I could also, there's one called warp, which if I right click, um, sorry, control T, right click and do warp. Now I can just start dragging this around a bit and start giving it some weird kind of shapes. So you can really warp your, your design. Yeah, so that's what it was. That's what it is now. And that was what it was before. So this is another way that you could use. Say I could select that, press V, hold Alt. Now I've got a copy of it. Now what I could do is I can Control T, go to Warp, and now start warping out different shapes, different di variations of the same object. And I can put them close to each other and it'd be like, I can have a whole page of slightly warped versions and then I could sort of 
start taking out bits or adding bits as I like. So these are all the tools that you can use that will make your life as a designer a lot easier, a lot freer. Yeah, so that was the um, uh, transform tool. So I hope you like that and you can use all these tools so far that I've showed you to start making pages of these sort of little designs here. And by the end, if you do three or four pages on each of these um, lessons that I'm showing, you will get very used to the tools and you'll get a lot, you it will feel a lot freer. Yeah. Okay. So thank you very much and I'll see you next time. <music> Today I'm going to show you about the color picker tool. Now this is quite a useful tool, um, especially when you don't, when you need to uh, work fast, when you need to pick up colors, keep changing colors. Um, so first of all, what I'm going to show you here, if you go to Windows, you can go to color. Uh, so what this usually looks like is, I think this. So if you do color, you'll get something like this. So over here you've got saturation, then you add black and it gets to black. You add white, it gets to white and you add gray, it gets to gray. So that is a color, that is a shade. And these are tones, uh, sorry, um, uh, tints. And as you go to gray, it will be a tone. So that's just your basic understanding of this color block. And then if you go around here, you've got different colors. However, I like to use this one, which is the color wheel. And this um, is really cool. This is um, it, it shows you the colors. So uh, we'll do this a bit later in, in the color section. But you can yeah pick nice color schemes like this. Um, so that is one thing about color. So over here, you've got your shades this way, you've got your tints that way, and you've got your tones that way, which I think is a lot easier to, you know, to use. So I can get a, so I'm gonna get a, yeah, let's make a new layer. So I'll get a yellow. So I'll go back to my render brush by pressing opacity, bringing down the flow. And now I've got this nice little area here. So now if I add a, tone to it I start to get a grade starts to be a bit grayer and you can sort of move it around as well just in this goes more towards gray so yeah you can see that now if I add a tint to it you can see it starts to get lighter and if I add a shade then it's you've got these real called dark now this is like a monochromatic color scheme so what you can also do is not go so extreme with it all. So even if I just, you know, start messing around and start to get in this, it's more interesting than just this. Yeah, you've got that bright bit of color, but if you just start to add little bits here and there, variations of your color, it starts to look more interesting. And that is one of the key things about design is just making it everything look more interesting okay so you can see there that I'm quite easily able to blend things in and with the airbrush it would be even easier but the airbrush does give quite a a very smooth um, smooth what do you call it um, so I'll take the opacity off of this so the airbrush, so because the flow is so low, it's coming out of it. Yeah, so with the airbrush, so I can just get this tone here, start to lighten it up. Yeah, I can add a bit of orange to just warm it up a little bit. Yeah, so this is this is blending colors together. But you can see with the airbrush, it's a very sort of very smooth transition. Where well, you might want with the render brush, you can use it can be a lot more um can be a bit more painterly yeah so got my flow there put my opacity on and oh my opacity is at five percent that's why okay so you can see i'm starting to just blend so i can also just touch a bit in there just a little bit and then i can pick that up so this one is about the color picker okay so what I'm doing here I can just pick around and I can pick a bit of this orange and I'm doing that by from the brush tool you just hold alt and you get this color picker so then anything you pick say I've got a green here um, 
I can pick a bit of this yellow, start to add it to the green. And you can see as I'm adding it, it's becoming more harmonized to the actual other colors. And it gives a really nice kind of painterly effect to what's going on here. And um, then I can just get a bit of the, the shade of green. So this idea of shade, tint, and tone, <clears throat> uh, the and color. So color, shade, tint, tone. That is something that is very useful in um, in drawing and in art. So you can start to add lots of variations of your color. You can make color a lot more interesting. But here, what I'm going to show you now, if I go to this my folder, I've got my fo my folder up here. So I'm just going to select an image. So to bring an image into Photoshop, you can just drag it. Okay. Boom. Okay, so this is Czech Republic. So I'm just um, resizing it and I've got that there. So you can see the colors that are in a photo are much more obviously realistic. So what I can do is I can actually pick colors from here. Say so I get a, so I pressed M, that gives me a marquee tool, which is over here. And if you hold it, you can also make it an ellipse. But I'm just gonna use that. And I'm gonna get this blue you can see that I've just dabbed that blue in and I'm going to get little bits of blue from all over the place, a bit more white over here. And from here, I can also start messing around so I can give a little bit more saturation if I want. Yeah, you can start mixing that around. See, I'm going to press Control H so I don't need to focus on those little ants around, running around the corner. So if I get a little bit of this here, just adding a bit of color here and there. And now I can get the color of the clouds. So I can just add those in here. Yeah. There we go, just like that. And you can see this is starting to look a lot more realistic than the previous colors. So now for the, for the, for the flowers, for the green field, I'm just adding that in the bottom. And I might add a few of these little colors. Now, this is very small, so that would have to be really small like this, yeah? So by doing this, you might have a picture that you've already drawn. You've already done the line art for, but you want to get some colors. So instead of just thinking about it and looking at this wheel, you can just start to get a nice photo that you like. And you can just start adding these in. Now, I, I took this photo myself, so I wouldn't have any issues with any kind of, like, you know, rights or anything like that. But even if you did have a photo that you got off the internet, you still wouldn't have issues with it because you're only using the colors. Yeah, if it becomes obvious that you've copied something, then all right, possibly then. But generally speaking, you won't need to. So have a look on the internet for some for some nice um, images that you like the colors of and then you can start to apply that to your drawings. So this is what I'm doing here. I'm just I'm just having a little sketch, little study here. And then this gray underneath, I'll use that as well. So you can see that if we zoom out, they're looking pretty similar. So this is one of the um, one of the techniques that we can use to make nice um, nice um, color schemes without having to really go too deeply into color. So long as you're just you know careful with what you're doing, you'll be able to get something that looks quite nice. Okay, so that is it for the color selection tool. That was quite a quick one, but. Um, you know, some of these you don't need to go into too much detail. It's just important that you understand about select finding colors, putting them in, also playing around. So if I just get see that color that I found just there, so that's in my sky already, but I can just nudge it around and start getting color variation. You see, it's a bit of color variation coming in here and there, and that's really going to add to my picture. Yeah, so you can see that I can get a little bit more. I can go a bit wild with it, make it really small and just add these little areas here like that. You see? 
and um, so that's what I want you to also have a go at so now I can get rid of this I can get that I can put that over here and I can use those colors so let's actually just <clears throat> mute uh, sorry mute uh, hide that get another one make another selection and now what I'm going to do using the same colors I'm going to have a go at messing around with different a different sort of a different design yeah so I've got my white there I'll get my blue nice bright blue add a bit of color variation here we go and you see I'm picking up from here as well and I'm able to if I get something say I put that blue in it's like oh man that's way too much so I'll just hide that move it over a bit so that's way too much I can pick this up and start to gray it out you see and that's that color variation still makes sense so I'm gonna get my cloud shape and maybe this time instead of going that way I might want my clouds to come some reason coming like this so there we go like that and I'll get my green and this time I might have my green just coming like this and I might have some hills going on here yeah, some hills in the background so I'm just lightly pressing this so the green is just about coming out but you can see it's starting to look like it's in the background and I'll just add a bit more I'm just gonna gray that out a bit here we go and I'll just put a couple big hills over there yeah and uh, for the yellow I will just get a few little flowers going but about 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 put those in there we go and you can see now I've got a different design and it's you know it's it's cool you can just start messing around I've still got my selection by the way so I don't so while, when I'm drawing on the edges it doesn't necessarily um, it doesn't go outside my edges so if I press control H it's still there so I can literally just go across there I can even get a blue and just make this real big take down the opacity to 10% and just give it a little wash you see I can do that with the red maybe and you can see I've got a different color scheme just by doing that so now if I hide that Reshow that I can select this one with the V tool, press D to deselect, get the V tool, and now I've got two. Yeah, so have a go with that. Have a go at making different shapes, different um, designs off of one photograph. So this was quite close to the photograph that I made that, uh, that was already there, but this is starting to stray away, and I could also push it even further if I wanted. I could even get my selection tool and start to place in objects such as that. Press Control H to hide it. I get the B, the brush tool, and then I could just get this dark blue here and start to paint that in. I could even get the green from this one. Start to get that in there. If it gets too dark, I can just start to fade it out okay so that is the next lesson that was the color picker tool so hopefully that is uh, you understand that and I'll see you next time for the marquee tool thank you today is just about a marquee tool so this is pretty easy so um, I showed you in the previous lecture uh, lesson so this here is your marquee tool you can make boxes okay so this is good um, because when you want to say I don't know you might want to start designing an area background or something like that go to my brush tool make a new layer and you can see let's get a black there we go. so I can start to paint within that shape so if I press ctrl H it's right there okay now why this is good um, because you're, it allows you to um, work within the parameters of it okay so I might want to maybe make like a 
now in shape maybe here and this is something that you can do at home as well this is a really cool um little te little exercise to do yeah so you can just now start see what i'm doing here i'm starting to lay in some some big shapes so then what i can do here i can start putting in shapes here like that I can start carving shapes out and start placing bigger shapes start carving them out yeah and you can see i can start drawing like that now um that is one thing as well that the the marquee tool is good for but also for example say i want to so you see that now if i want to select a shape in here you can see that i've got that selected still so if i want to select another shape to maybe make some mountains and i press ctrl d so now it's deselected so if i'm like this that's all good i can make some sort of shape like this ctrl h get some color in there and start blocking this in all right but then now that whole shape is deselected now now i can actually reselect it by just um using the magic wand tool but then you can see that it doesn't get the whole thing and then i'd have to start click in these different areas like that so what you can do with the uh, marquee tool which is really cool actually okay so if i press g i'll get my paint bucket tool now this might be set to your gradient tool but for now we're just using the paint bucket tool and i just select that and i'll just press d to get black and i'll just do the whole thing in black uh, alternatively i could have if i wanted to get my brush and just do put it all in there like that so you don't need to use a paint bracket tool um so now from here what i can do get the marquee tool and start selecting these shapes here yeah just gonna move this out of the way um and i can just all right so i'll just show you quickly here just a few different ways you can do this so i can do that i can do a bigger one here i can do a long one down here and i can do one like this maybe and one like that there now if i'm on that same layer let me just get rid of the color for a second so here we go that's the layer now I just press delete and now i've got a for a series of frames so i make a, a sh window underneath and now what I can do is really nicely work within those frames, just like that. And it, it's 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 basically like having a selection all the time because you don't really see what's. So now I just put in some, I don't know, some shapes like this. Here we go. And Control H. Get some white. Now here I might want to switch actually to my soft brush okay and i haven't got anything selected except for that so i might leave that one just for now so i can slowly start to pull out these shapes here and then i can start selecting so this is all based on stuff we've already done but just adding the marquee to it allows you to make these nice frames so i'll put in a white here or there which i probably don't, don't want to do Put more of a dark hill just like that yeah and i can place a figure there we go i'm gonna place that guy just there add the head add the hands and he's like yo what's going on over here okay and then i'll just select that gray and i can just add it so by doing this you can really you know start playing around and um this is all obviously the marquee tool is how we get our frames there is another way we could do this however so if i move that now up you can you know our frame frames are gone so uh, what i could do is fill up this whole page with little sketches like this little ideas and then after i could take one of these ideas so for example i would just you know select that uh i'll just merge it down then i would just get my marquee tool again Control V, uh, sorry, Control C, Control V. Now I've just got that one on its own, so I'll get rid of this layer. And I can use this now to start my my drawing with. So I'll get my um, 
hard round brush uh, pressure sensitivity as well as shape dynamics and then I can start to sketch out this idea yeah into in more detail and this is what um, this is a real and you know this this is um, a combination of all the tools we've done so far but at the same time by using the marquee tool you can start to make these frames as well so that is another thing that it the marquee tool is really good for I'm going to show you one more thing. So the way that we made those frames with the marquee tool, that was a quick sketch there. Okay, cool, whatever. So the way that we made that frame like that, we did it in, in that way, but they were all different sizes. So what I could do next is I could just make, say I want them all to be the same size. I'll make one marquee tool there. And now I'll get my brush and just fill that in. I need a new layer. Just fill that in like this. Okay. Then I will deselect, press V and hold alt and now if I now if I, I can move it around like this if I hold shift it will keep it in line okay so if I hold shift and I drag it down it will keep it in line okay so what I'm gonna do here I'm just gonna drag it over here holding shift and um, now I'll press control E to make these into one layer and again I'll go down like that Again, press Control E to make that one layer. Now I can press the trans. I can transform these, make them a bit smaller so that I can get another row in. And maybe I'll make it a bit smaller so I can get like two rows going down as well. So then I can basically do that. Control E, and then what I'm going to do? I'm going to my last. I'm going to get Marquee tool. Select all of those. Press V, Control V, and what Photoshop's okay. So I'm gonna go like that. Now I'll press Control D. Now I've got six frames, and just to make them go to the edge of the page, I will just. So I think I said this before, but if I just drag these out, it will keep the dimensions. Yeah, but if I hold Shift, then I can actually just stretch these to fit my page. Okay. Uh, so what I'll do, I don't want them too tall, so I'll just do that and I'll put them right there. Bang. Okay, so now with that being done, what I can do is make a new layer, fill it in black. Bang. And if I basically control click the layer, it will give me the selection of whatever is on that layer. So now I will just hide those go back to my um, black layer and press delete and there you go all the same size okay so now what I would suggest you guys do is have a little bit of fun get your render brush out get your line brush out get your uh, your selections going and have a go at designing some maybe landscapes or some um, you know so for example I could have just a little I don't know what I'm doing here, just doing some random shapes. So by doing these random shapes, you can sort of say, oh, well, that could be a mountain or that could be this or that or the other. Yeah. So here we go. And another one here, maybe this will be, I don't know, this can just be some sort of land mass here. And then I can have like some sort of shape here. We're, we're also going to talk a lot about shapes in, in the future episodes. But this is just to mess around. So you could do stuff like this, fill out the whole page, okay? And then you can start adding, you know, layers of, of texture, layers of tone. I can also come back in here. And so this is quite a nice technique. It's called the Noltan technique, where you just use black and white to get your basic shapes, okay? So I might just do that. Yeah, and so that might be a piece of light just shimmering there. Or it could actually be, you know, maybe there is a bridge, yeah, coming out of this building. Oh, going like that. Yeah, so then I could just put some structures down here like that. Yeah, I could put maybe a tower here, tower here. So this idea of making shapes from these little frames and then 
cutting them out and starting to do a detailed line drawing of them. Yeah, you could you could mess around with that, but this is all based on making frames from the marquee tool. Now, one last thing I'm gonna just show you quickly with the marquee tool is ellipses. So, all right, so I've got my lips selected, so I'm just gonna go back to my brush and I'm going to just go over here, make a new layer, deselect, and now I'm there, okay. So you might want to, for example, if I got my lasso tool, I make a shape like this. All right, boom. All right. Maybe I want this to be a car. Okay. So I can easily use my marquee tool to make a wheel. Now you can see it's it can be any type of ellipse, but if I hold shift, then it will be a perfect circle. And I'm just just for um, the purpose of showing, I'll make this gray. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to control and drag that over maybe here quite well, not there maybe over here let's just put it there whatever so you can see that i can easily make wheels like that also what i could do is this is a bit more bit more fiddly but i'll deselect so i could do this fill that in i want to fill that in black so now I can copy this over here, okay? Now I can resize it, so make it smaller. Now I can move it back over here, and I can recolor it. So let's just, so you can see where it is, it's not exactly straight. So just using the arrow tools, I'm just readjusting it. And now I can color that in a different color, which will be here. Yeah, so you can see that. And now I can start using the lasso tool to start making some rims. Okay. Um, when we go more into design of these sort of objects, I will show you some better ways to do this. But I'm just doing this by hand right now. So here we go. That is my poorly drawn rim and I can just there we go yeah so then I can also use the marquee tool to put in this is really rough I'm just going to put in the circle there color that in and now you can start to see I can add lots of different circles like that put that in there and now it's starting to look more like a wheel so the other thing you could do is basically if usually say a car is at the side angle so you can see sort of like i'll just quickly rough this in there we go so i believe i have a selection so i'll press ctrl d and now i can draw so if my side if i've got the car and it's sort of like this right so i'll just take that bit make that slightly curved and I'll just do that. Okay, so then the rest of my car comes over here like that. So you can see that this is a, a straight view of the car wheel. So what I could do, I'll just select this, Control X. Wait a minute, it's on its own layer anyway. Yes. Okay, so I will just deselect, press V. Now I'll drag it in place and I can, I can press Control T to make the transform and then I can do control T and I can drag it into perspective okay just like that so that is another really useful way that we can use the marquee tool um, so mostly people would use the marquee tool for you know just making boxes but this ellipse um, this ellipse function is very useful, okay? Just like that. There we have it. A little car wheel. Yeah. I'll put a little logo in there. This would be my little eye for Aishan logo. There we go. And I'll just put a few little, little shimmers, little highlights. And there you have it. You can start to, you know, make different 
objects with the marquee tool and the selection tool. And the last thing I'm going to show you in this lesson is the polygonal lasso tool. Now this is highly useful. Okay, here you start. So you can see what I did there. I just went to this where my lasso tool is and press L and this is your soft or your smooth lasso tool. But here we have a polygonal lasso tool and this is really useful when making things like weapons, spaceships, crafts. Yeah, here we go. And I can really get these hard shapes in. And the same rules apply that you can hold shift to add new shapes. You can hold alt to delete sh shapes. And there you go. I've got a hard shape there. And you can also, so I'll just quickly color that in. You can also mix them. So I could just get this, go back to my lasso tool, my soft lasso tool, and just start to add curved shapes as well. Yeah. So um, I find this really useful when I'm making um, things such as cars or spaceships and stuff. And you can just really just take your time with the shapes. Whereas with the soft lasso tool, it's a lot harder because you have to make sure you get your shape right. So here we go. I'm just adding different bits in. So I might get my soft round. There we go. I can start adding in texture. Okay. So that's it for that lesson. Hope you uh, enjoyed it. Learned something. So have a go. You can start making shapes like these. You can start, you know, um, drawing cars and adding wheels on them. You can also start making frames and then making little landscape pictures like this. Yeah, so um, have a go and um, have a go. All these different things, try and make a couple pages of each thing that I'm showing you. Yeah, so that way the tool gets really embedded into your mind. So, okay, I'll see you next time. See you later. <music> still run over the basics so we've got two more lessons left on the basics um, basic tools so this one is about the symmetry tool so if I select that you've got a lot of the uh, we did this slightly before but you've got a lot of different um, things you can do here with these so I'm just gonna run for a few of them so the vertical is probably the most useful uh, so I can just uh, make a new layer get my brush I must have a selection so here we go we can start drawing in symmetry so I'm just gonna get a hard line brush go obviously make it smaller yeah and you can see now this is really useful for designing patterns for example some certain things and ornamental things that you might have on buildings so you could sort of make a whole sheet of um, you know, just little kind of emblems that you could then skew into place using the skewed skew tool. Um, it's really good for making like I'm going to do here, like a little doorway. It's really good for that. Um, it's really good for designing things like paving stones. It's really good for um, all of those sort of uses. So here's a little doorway and I'm just rushing this obviously, but I'm just showing you how really quickly you can just start making things um so for example maybe that's a big doorway right so i'll just uh once i've done get the uh press v can move that over here so then i can have another doorway and this is something that when you're making comic books you know when you've got different settings this is something really cool that you can add. You can sort of start designing these different, you know, doorways, arches, pillars, paving stones, all these kind of stuff can really give life to your creations, oh, sorry, to your um, environments. Okay, so this one, I think I'll just do one big door. Don't know how you would open that door. So in that case, I will not do one big door. I'll do two doors. There we go. There we go. So your designs also have to make sense some, some in some way. So here we go. I've got another one. And there we go. Okay, so that's another one. And you can see I just did that in literally 
how long does that you know so I can press control T can shrink them put them up here I can make another one so let's try a more wider one so when we go into shape design and stuff like that we'll talk about how to variate things and one of the ways to do it is to make them wider so here we go do, do, do. I'm just sort of having fun with this really you know and just uh, have a go using the symmetry tool to get some cool ideas for designs so here we can see this is a much uh, this is more of a rectangular design and I will just take that so they're all on one layer so for me to move things around I would just need to okay I still got my polygon lasso tool selected which is no problem do that but for this I do prefer to use the normal lasso tool and I press V and can move that over here so press D so now yeah so this is one way you can really quickly make ideas for your designs another thing you can do with this is um, make characters so if I've got this sort of shape going on here I just want to make maybe I just want to make a costume so I don't need to worry about my character being in proportion I mean uh, being in a in a particular pose so here we go this is a bit so there we go like that so I say I've got my character shape like this so what I could do boom boom I just put this arm going that way and we'll talk about this as well another time about how to just you know make the basic human form there we go a bit long arms but that's no problem okay so so what I could do here now you can see I basically just easily sketched out this body so I'm just going to now make my brush a little bit bigger so now I'm gonna start adding bits to the body okay so here is some sort of elbow guard this can be some sort of shoulder pad over here we can have a little maybe we'll give him a hood give him a hood and we'll have this um, we'll have this now the other thing the only thing with this that you can't really do say I just wanted to make him have a sort of sideways button like this you see you can't really do that everything has to be in symmetry so for those things you'd have to turn off the symmetry and then sort of do that do that now when you want to turn back on the symmetry you can do last use symmetry so that will put exactly where it was and here we just gonna add you know I'll do I'll just add some sleeves like this like that here we go now he's got a belt and uh, here we'll just give him a little one of these things like that and there you go already just quickly in a matter of seconds I basically am able to come up with a kind of cool design just like that so this symmetry tool is pretty powerful yeah and um, it's it's just there it's right there at the top of Photoshop so whenever you need to do something that's a little bit tedious always remember this symmetry tool exists okay uh, now you can see that in certain areas like with the hair you wouldn't want your hair to be like symmetrical but say for example he had on a helmet well that's a different story isn't it so here we go this helmet is some weird kind of helmet like that and I'll just do this here we go like boom now you can see so quickly I was able to give him get this character going and what I'm gonna do add some laces blah 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 okay so that's the symmetry tool um, and that's the horizontal symmetry tool so now what I'm gonna do I'm gonna go to diff th these ones are really cool to just mess around with so some of them when you are making so let me just delete uh, let me just hide that make a new layer so say you wanted to make an intricate wall design or maybe some sort of tribal pattern or something like that or maybe you wanted to make a mandala or something that's you're going to use as a decoration for some sort of cave painting or something like that so this kind of stuff is really cool yeah so I can just now shrink that make it smaller put it over here you know that could even be a lampshade um, and 
yeah, you can just mess around with it, you know, and just get these really nice shapes going on. And I would just advise to just be as loose as you can, creative as you can, and just play around with different shapes. So now you see like that, it's almost like an Indian sort of henna design, but that could be, you know, above a doorway or something, you know? So I have a go with all these different symmetry tools. Um, I'm just gonna shrink that down. And there you go, this is how we just make a whole page of designs. Simple, simple. And I'll go back to my brush. Now let's have another go, let's try this mandala. Uh, you can change the amount of segments as well. So let's go with, let's stay with three. Here we go, let's move it over here so it's not in the way. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna draw something in one of the cubes, something like that, yeah. And you can see this is looking really nice and it's so simple to just make these shapes. And I can just start adding little bits of shading here, little bits, little frilly bits, yeah. And then to top it all off, I could, I'll just make it a bit smaller though. Hmm. You know, I'll just uh, get rid of these guys. Control X, Control V, paste it onto a new layer. Hide that. Now I'll come back to this. I'll get my brush again, select the layer. And here we go. Yeah. And we can make this into a... Little emblem. And that could possibly be, again, on a wall somewhere. It could be anything. It could be whatever you want. But these are just ways that you can quickly make designs that you can flesh out your environments with. So let's try another one. Let's try that again. But let's try and increase it to, let's try seven. Sounds weird. So now press enter. I'm on the same layer. So I can't, I won't grow, go over it. But there you go. Yeah. It's almost easier doing it with more actual, um, doing it with more segments because you don't have to draw so much. So again, we've got two designs right there, a matter of seconds that could easily be above a wall or something. So for example, if I get this, I'll just make this smaller, put that here. And then I'll deselect and I'll get my previous drawings of my doorways. Yeah. So you can see how these could easily be. In fact, let's just make this even more fun. So I'll just I'll go back to my symmetry tool. I use vertical. I'll align it right in the center there. I'll press enter and I'm actually, I believe on the same layer. So now I can just make some cool little doorways. In fact, I think I want to make these come down. I have a vertical across. I'll make, so what I'm doing here, you can see I'm repeating this pattern here, which is tying it in together. And then I'm just going to make an arch. There we go. All right, so I'll just make that arch go up here. And I'll just, again, make these here like that. And then, let's see. But again, repeat this pattern down here. And, you know, as you can see, it's so easy to just put this all together and, you know, end up with a bit of a cool looking doorway. Yeah. So then that could go like this. And then that could go like that. And bada boom, bada bing. 
we've got a cool looking doorway um what i'll just just to finish this off i will just do that yep so it, this could possibly be the entrance to like a great chamber or something and we just did that in a matter of seconds okay so let's get this off off now with this shape here if i get my circular marquee tool can select that there and press v hold alt i can drag it down here control t to transform and i can sort of put one here put one up and then i'll just again huh, hold alt again put it here Let's not, not do it that way. Control D. Get the marquee tool. V. Hold shift so it's in line. And there you go. You can just keep, literally, you can just keep adding to this, adding to this as you want. And it's such an easy way to make really cool designs. So have a go. Make a few pages of uh, these floral shapes, different kind of shapes, different um, textures. You can use different um types of doorways you can make props make anything you want you can even do characters like this guy here so i could have just moved him over over here like that and do another one yeah so um yeah hope you enjoyed that that is a symmetry tool and i'll speak to you next time see you later not many people again use this tool um i don't know why um it's very useful so particularly if i'm drawing a environment for example say i've i've got my sort of maybe i don't even use perspective grid at this point i'm just sort of i just want to i've got an idea yeah and i'm thinking all right i just want to get this out so i so it's down so maybe i'm just drawing some sort of building here and it comes down like this uh, maybe yeah um so i would just you know so you just sort of a lot of the time what you do is you just roughly put in the perspective like this and you're sort of drawing freely with a perspective that is not perfect yeah and then i might have um yeah i might have like a like maybe a ledge there and i have some more buildings and they will go down like this and i have another one up here that will come like this so this is one thing you do want to avoid this sort of aligning of these verticals you want them to be slightly off so here we go all right so what i can do with the line tool so i'm sort of putting in these slabs here like that so if i just hide that so imagine that's my first draft yeah so the line tool is down here you need also if you hold it you can get other tools you got the custom shape tool as well which i'm not going to show but that's a very cool tool as well so if i got the line tool up here it can either be a shape a path or pixels so just select pixels and now i can actually start so i put in a line um because it's on another layer you can't really see it so well but what i'm going to do is i'm just going to make a straight line there and with this one i will drag it down so I might want to say, maybe that's too much, so I might want to put it there. So then with this one, I'll again put it there. So you can see how off my perspective was when I just drew it by hand. So this is really cool for just getting in a perspective grid that you need to just line up all your shapes. So here you go, I'm just, I'm just doing that. And what that allows me to do then is i'll make that again lighter now on my cleanup i can go in here now you can see that was way off yeah so really what that should look like is this yeah okay so here as well that was way off so my verticals on a one point perspective will always go straight up and my horizontals will always go straight that way. But the the lines that go into, that show depth, they will always recede to a point. So here we go. Yeah, you can see it's already looking a lot straighter and a lot more, 
yeah, a lot nicer. So that will go directly sideways. This will be my vertical up. So this is again very rough, very loose, but I'm just using it to illustrate how we can use this line tool. Um, so if you need, so you can see already that horizontal is very wonky. This horizontal is also very wonky. So I just connect these shape, I'll just connect these shapes here, and you can see that that is very much slanted. Yeah. So what I would need to really Yeah. So the reason it looks so distorted is because I'm using a very the perspective the vanishing point is very close to the objects, but that doesn't matter right now. It's just for the example. So I'm going to show you before and after. Just like this. Okay, and I will, you know, I'll do this bottom line. I will make that recede on this line. There we go, and I'll push that over there like that. Okay, so if I remove my grid, okay, so I've got that. And you can also see that these lines are completely off. Yeah, so if I was going to actually follow the grid for that, these lines would be actually in this direction, like that. And then the horizontals will be like that. Yeah, so let's just... Um, Get rid of the grid. We'll get rid of this one. Move this one from here. Move it over there. Bring it back to full opacity. And let's just compare the two. Another one. That one. So this one is much cl more closely following the perspective. As you can see, and this one, it, the perspective is all over the place. This one's going down, this one's going down, this one's sort of going right down to here. This one's going right down to here. And really, they should all go into the same vanishing point. Okay? So by using the line tool, we can sort of trace our earlier objects and correct the perspective. So that's what I usually use the line tool for. Um, also, you can obviously make rectangles. You can have them fill, or you can have them, uh, so, so yeah, these would all be filled shapes, actually. So here we go. And I could just, yeah, if I want to make some sort of, um, you know, that I can select a white, and I can just sort of have some of these shapes like that. There we go. Just, I'm putting in random shapes here, like this. And then I can get that shape. Just making its own layer XV and then I can start to fill in my shapes you see just like that yeah and then where it is overlapped by another shape so that's where the shape is so what I'll do I'll just delete there slightly there and just like that yeah so okay, that is the that is the um, last tool there, the line tool that completes all the basic training in Photoshop. So um, next we will go into the second section, which will be um, actually getting into the basics of drawing. Okay, where we'll make the first characters, etc. So that was the Skill Damia comic book creation. Uh, Aisha Namara. Designer from London, signing out. See you next time. Today we are going to be continuing our course on comic book creation. So what we're going to do first of all is going to start by drawing basic shapes. Okay. So I will just get to my brushes here. I'll pick a hard round and I'll put the opacity and size um size variation on here we go i've got blue at the moment so i'll just keep this black here so um first thing you want to just do is just um remember what we spoke about with the 
with the different types of drawing, okay? So we've got the drawing from the wrist, drawing from the elbow, and drawing from the shoulder, okay? So when we're drawing our shapes, that's what we need to take in consideration. So if I'm drawing a small shape just like this, then I can just, there's no need to sort of, I can just draw it like that. So I didn't really need to use my elbow for that, but if I'm drawing a bit of a bigger shape, then I can draw sort of like this here. And you can see, I'm just starting to rough in these shapes here. So now with, when it comes to shapes, uh, we have, this is something that I'll, I'll keep mentioning throughout the course. You've got the triangle shape. You've got the circle shape you've got the square shape, okay? So everything in reality is made out of these three shapes or combination of those shapes. So what we're gonna start doing today is we are going to start drawing these shapes, drawing them neatly and combining the shapes, okay? So this will help you with your drawing technique. So for example, I might start with a triangle here. Mm -hmm. So once I've got my shape, I can start to refine it by going over the silhouette. And this is something that again, this will refine your shape and make it stand out more. There we go. Um, so now I can start drawing different types of triangles. Yeah. Such as this. So I can start with a basic outline and then I can just sort of, so here we go. Just gonna draw through those. There we go. I'm going over it. So that's that. So using the eraser to just um, remove what I don't want and then again, just going over the silhouette, okay? So you can also um, start to combine these shapes. <clears throat> so for instance, uh, let's say I've got a few triangles there now. So I can now start to Do some shapes in the background. Yeah. So then I can also draw through that and there it would be there. That's where the end would be. Okay. So this is really good for just developing your technique, your drawing technique. So feel free just to fill up a whole page of triangles, a whole page of squares, rectangles, and a whole page of circles. I'm just having this one poke out from behind there. Maybe I will run this that way. Mm -hmm. And then uh, let's have a big triangle here like this. There we go. Okay. Now I'm just going to refine the edge again. And you'll see why this will, this is very important later. Here we go. So, um, this is also quite therapeutic. <laughs> drawing shapes. This is also a really good warm up for your, so now I've got that issue again with the kissing of the shapes. We don't want that to happen. So we'll just make that a bit bigger. There we go. I'm just drawing these shapes out. Okay. 
we go. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm connecting all of these different shapes together. And that is giving me a triangular composition. So with this one, I want it to come in front of that one. Just like this. And you can see that I'm starting to get a really cool shape. Now the triangle shape is um, the most dynamic of the three and it creates excitement. So you can imagine, um, for example, this could, I could replace all of these shapes with characters. So I could have his head here, have his arm here like this, one arm here, this here like that. Sorry. Could have you coming over like this. Like that. You see, so you can use these shapes to create compositions. Um, but first just have a go at practicing drawing these shapes. And after you can turn them into, if you want compositions. Okay. So there we go. So that is my triangle composition. And I might also just have a few triangles dotted around, which are not connected to anything. Like so. Yeah. So that's one. So let's move that array around somewhere. Let's get that over here. So to do that, I've just pressed L. I just selected the whole area and then I've pressed V and that allows me to, if I click on there, I can move it. So, um, if I wanted to move it on its own, I just press V and I can move it, but it will move everything in that layer. But if I want to move something specific in the layer, I'll make a selection, press V, and now I can move that on its own. Okay, so that's my triangular, uh, my triangular shape. So now I'm going to move on to the circle. So again, I can also sort of, um, start off with light shapes like this yeah so I'm basically just making random circles very lightly with my pencil brush now just so this is another way you could do it and then you just go over there we go so pen, uh, circles are probably hardest to draw and it's, it's good practice just to actually just try and draw a circle that meets over there. That is um, one of these design techniques actually to draw circles. There we go. And again, I'm just going to start adding some strength to the silhouette of the circle okay now another thing you can have with circles is um a big thing in design is is about ellipses so ellipses are where if you've got a horizon line if you've got a so you've got a so i've got a circle right here just like that. As it gets closer to the horizon line, it will start to get flatter. So you can have these sort of squash circles as well added to the mix. So I might just do a circle like this, cutting through that one, go around here and go around there. So you can see that this this exercise 
is really useful in developing brush fidelity. So I would say this is a good way to warm up, to get um, your muscles, your, your, your drawing muscles prepared for a session. And um, it's also really cool to develop these abstract shapes. Now, I mentioned before that these could also be um, converted into compositions, which is something that we might look at later. Okay, so here, besides the obvious planet looking maybe universe a composition this could also be an underwater composition with a lot of bubbles it could also be each one could represent a person so you could have a person whose form fits here so you can see that just add in this basic shape of a human like this and you could you could also have um so you could, these could also be replaced by different elements. So um, I would advise just be creative with this. Um, have fun, which is the most important thing. So here I go, I'm just starting to add a bit more definition here. And I can go around all of them. It's also good for creating these sort of um, modern art style um, pictures you know so I could have this in a frame and let's just make another ellipse round here like that we'll carry on about, about there something like that so I can carry on adding strength to the lines as you can see this is a real cool way of making, as I said before, really free compositions. You could also have maybe like some sort of monster with like tentacles and so this could be his eyes. Then you could have like all kind of weird tentacles going in these directions. Um, but you know, it's really like looking at clouds, you know, finding pictures within pictures. So I will call that done for my circular composition. I might just move this guy over a bit somewhere else. I think maybe, maybe over there, just so I've got more space. So now I'm going to select all of that, cut that out. I'm just going to move it over here. I'm going to select everything. Just going to reduce the size a little bit. There we go. And there we go. I've got a triangular composition and I've got a circular composition. Uh, also, the circle is so I'll, I'll cover. Basically, uh, these can also be things like this. You see, S uh, triangular lines or circular lines. Yeah, so I could have something like this going on. And I could just, yeah, I could have things like that coming out of here, swinging around here. And that's. So we've got circles cir and circular lines, you see? And that is also part of this shape design. So now I'm just going to add that. Could make this like that. This like that. Yeah. So uh, now I'll just quickly go into my square designs. So here we go. Boom. Square designs are really cool when you're designing things like um, technology things, like so technological devices or sci-fi, sci-fi uh, robots and stuff like that. 
and here we go. So I've got a little square composition here, and then I'll spend time just, I'll do, I'll zoom in a bit. I could just do a bit neater. So here, this is a different way I'm doing it. I'm actually just gonna go through all my verticals first, as you can see. Here we go. So it is a time consuming thing, but it's also good to um, develop your technique. So I would just advise doing a few of these once in a while. And as I said before, it's really good for warming up. Here we go. I'm just sort of being a bit quicker with this one. I want to move on to something a bit more interesting. There we go. Most of the verticals are done now. Let's, oh, I've got these two here. And you can see that I'm just building up the strength in the line. And here we go. Now I'm doing all my verticals. Just like that. See, I could be doing this all with the shift. I could just shift, but I feel that that sort of takes a lot of life out of the composition. So I'm just going to quickly finish this one off. So you could imagine maybe this is a building scape. Maybe this is some flying machine. Okay. And here we go. So now when it comes to all of these shapes here, you can see that each one is giving a different mood, okay, a different, a different feel. So one of the things that, um, so the, the, this will, uh, the squares, they will give a lot of stability, a lot of structure, the circles that will give a lot of fluidity, a lot of movement, a lot of, um, also, um, a lot of softness, a lot of, like a lot of these, um, characters like pokemons and stuff like that they use a lot of circles because it's very cutesy and it's very safe and then the triangular shapes they're very dynamic very exciting but um a lot of villains are used created by these um triangular shapes so um just another thing that i want to run over um one second yeah so just another thing that i wanted to run over is that um, when we're doing characters and shapes like this, so now if I was to just, I'm gonna make my brush a bit smaller, just go around the silhouette of the whole shape. Okay, so I'm taking a lot of time here. I'm just going to go over the silhouette. And sometimes you, where things sort of overlap, you can do a bit, bit of a silhouette there as well. So yeah, you see that? Now I'm showing this for a reason as well. So when we will eventually move on to characters, this will be a very important part of the design process because we need to make sure that the character can, the silhouette is compelling and strong. So by going over the silhouette, we're able to see the whole shape in a very, I might just move my flow up a bit just so I get a stronger line. So here we go. So by doing this, Our shapes become the whole shape, the shape as a whole will read more, it will be stronger. So this is one of the um, things that we will do with our characters. Here we go. So the circular shapes are actually probably the hardest.
sort of rushedness a bit. There we go. So I'm nearly finished this circular design. So now you can see that this shape is popping off the page more than the other shapes. And that's because I've accentuated the silhouette. And we're going to do that. Maybe not. Yeah, we'll do that on all of them. So again, so this time I'll make a new layer so I can show you before and after. So here we go. The other thing that when you support the silhouette like this, a good thing that it does is it it gives you a contrast between the detail within the shape and the um, the actual silhouette, which gives a really nice effect. So here I'm just going around the whole shape of the triangle one, and that won't be as long. It's just straight lines. Here we go. So I say have a go at this, and if you want, you can start to color them in as well, which I might not do actually <laughs> uh, so here we go so this is a really important exercise that you can do to develop your drawing skills and your composition skills okay and just there there there, and there. so now if we just zoom out a little bit you can see that I can now just I'm just gonna take a bit of this line off there we go so here if I do before and after, before, after, before, after. Yeah, so that's one of the things that we need to make sure that we do when we're designing our characters, which we will soon get onto. So this one I'm just going to quickly do. Because there is another part that I want to show you. So here we go. Done about half of that. Mm -hmm. And I will not take long with the rest. Be able to get that done quickly. Uh, okay. That's more or less done. Okay, so that's our first. Oh, I missed that bit there. Oh. oh, I've got a white selected for some reason. Okay, there we go. Ish. Okay, let's just call that done. So here you go. These are um, ways in which we can use shapes. Okay. Um, so the next thing I want to show you is about combining shapes. So let's just get rid of all of that. So you can see here what the silhouette does. So it gives it this the overall shape a strength. Okay, so let's get rid of that. And uh, just quickly to show you. Um, this is the actual silhouette of the shape. Okay, same here. So um, that is very important when we're designing characters. We want to make that have a really nice silhouette. And we'll talk about that more later. So here we go. I might say I want to do a triangle here. A square here. And in fact, let's just go back a bit. So let's start with a circle here and a. So you can see that I'm using two shapes in this one shape. So I've got the circle and I've got the square. OK, so in this one. Again, this is the triangle but it's not a straight triangle, it's curved lines here. So I'm using the circle, 
the curved lines and the triangle. And here I can do this here like that. And then I can obviously add some triangular shapes. I go over the silhouette. Yeah. So this is another thing that you can do to um, practice drawing nice looking shapes. So uh, when, when uh, you learn about shapes, the important thing is to have an active side and a non active side. So for example, I could do this here, I could do this here, this here. In fact, I could just do that there. And that this side here, that's my active side, that's my non active side. So that is important when you're designing shapes. Okay. So there you can see the whole silhouette. So what we want to do, so here, you'd probably say, hmm, this is probably not the best type of shape. So if I wanted a better shape, I could add some bits here like this, some bits like that. And now this is the active shape side. There we go. Mm -hmm. um, so have a go at combining these shapes. So with this one here, this one, um, this is a triangle shape with the circular curves. Okay, so that makes it like that. Um, so here I'm starting with a square and now I'm adding these circular shapes. So this would be the active side. So let's get rid of these bits. Just using my, my eraser to get rid of the bits I don't want. There you have it. So I would say, you know, you should have a go at practicing combining shapes and coming up with really cool shapes. So this could almost be an F. Yeah. So you can also um, use letters in your um, shape design. So you could start to design fonts, start to make uh, custom types of lettering. But the way we're going to use these is to make um, characters. Um, so also we could have kind of shapes, random kind of shapes like this. So you can see what shape is predominantly used there. That's the circular shape. And I can make that more by doing this. And what I could do here is I can sort of, um, so if I've got a shape like that, if I put a triangle right there, then that triangle is going to stick out because all of this around is so is all circular and this is the only triangle shape there. So that's going to draw the viewer's attention. Okay, so in the same way, I could basically do this. Now, when you look at this shape, you're going to be drawn to that area. So this is an important thing to also keep in mind when you're designing shapes to like here, this is the same thing. Yeah. So ha uh, keep in mind that the majority of the shapes that you use. So here I'm using very circular shapes and I can take a bit out of that actually like this. Okay then all of a sudden this pointy area that becomes the focus of interest because the rest is all um, circular. So then when they become a very sharp point or something that is very contrast into the rest of the shapes, that becomes the area of interest. Okay. So that's another thing to keep in mind. Um, now here I'm just adding a little face to this shape just to show you that now we can even just start making characters out of these things here. But the point, the main point of it is to draw a nice looking shape. 
or a shape that you think looks nice or a shape that is. So what makes a good shape? So a shape, a good shape shouldn't be symmetrical. It should be um, irregular. So here, these two bits are quite similar. So if I was to now get rid of this bit and make it a lot bigger like that, that becomes more irregular and therefore it becomes more interesting. So when we're making shapes, we want our shapes to look interesting. So this is how we make it happen. Also remember to keep in the focal point. So an area, so you don't always need to have a focal point um, in your shapes because um, a lot of the times what you put in the middle of the shape might be your focal point, which is not part of the actual overall shape. Yeah. Um, so um, that is, yeah, just to keep in mind that um, if you do have a very contrasting shape coming into your shape, then one, uh, there should be an overall dominance of one type of shape, basically. So here you can see I am making a rectangular shape and it's irregular and it is a rectangular shape. So now if I were to just add this circle here, then the circle stands out and you're automatically looking in this area. Yeah. And um, let's try and draw a triangle. So now you can see that these two are competing for the, the what do you call it? The, the focal point. However, if I put more triangles like this, okay. That's looking a bit rectangular. I'm going to make it more triangular. Like that. Then this then becomes the focal point again, because there's only one of these. Um, so it's important to know that the focal point will always be the area of most contrast. So here, this is the most contrasting shape in all of these, because all of these shapes have angles. Okay. So that's a bit about creating shapes, combining shapes, making shapes. And as I said before, if you make yourself a nice, nice compositions, you can start to um, color these in. And, um, you know, it's, uh, it's a different type of art, but it's still art, you know, so you can start coloring these in, getting some nice color um, coordinations going on, some nice color schemes. And um, we'll talk more about color later. Well, you can see I can start make, making these more interesting. Yeah. So have a go making all these different shapes and um, see how you find it. So the, the point being, use these three shapes, um, triangle, square, and or rectangle and uh, circle, and see how many different kinds of designs you can make using those shapes. So I'm doing just coloring red in different areas. And as the red go grows, it starts to become the dominant color. Like this. So have a go and accentuate the silhouettes and maybe even color them in. And um, that's about it really. So I will just um, finish off by maybe coloring a bit more of this in. But you can see they make really cool kind of designs in themselves. And that's what you want. So if just as a shape, it's looking good, then when you transform those shapes into characters, then it's gonna, it's definitely gonna look good. So the idea is that from an abstraction of of uh, from an abstract form, if it's starting to read well and look good, then when you start to add, um, when you start to refine the shapes to, into actual characters or, you know, props, then it will, it will look, it will definitely look good. So the idea is that you can start off with these abstract shapes and then turn them into something else. Yeah. So now I'm just going to get a shade of that same red. 
I'm just going to start colouring it in here. And you can see I'm being quite rough with it. But I'm doing this for a reason because I'm showing you here. So here I've got this this principle of um, um, the accent um, applies with colour as well. So here we go. I'm just colouring these bits in here and here. And now if I get a completely different colour, maybe say, let's try blue. And I drop it in there. And you can see when you look at this shape, your eye automatically goes towards this color here. And that's because all of these are reds and shades of reds, whereas this is the only blue. So in the same way that when you create a shape, if it's predominantly say a square, if you, um, if you introduce a circle or a different shape and there's only one or two of them, then that will automatically take the view of the viewer. So this is a principle of design that works through all types, all areas of design. So anyway, uh, have a go at that. Draw, draw some shapes, make some funky designs, you know, so I could also just, um, if I wanted to, I could just, uh, okay. So have a go, make some funky designs. See, I could also just grab this here um make a layer underneath and get a nice yellow mm -hmm. and i could get my airbrush this time so brush get my airbrush and there we go some nice funky patterns yeah I start mixing in some of this red here and there yeah. It's almost like abstract art. <laughs> so here, what's happened here is that you can see that there are these white sections. Now what it is, instead of deleting the shape, I actually just picked up the white and drew over. So there we go. So now I will just these bits here. If I just take this one out of the picture like this. And I'll just, you know, I'll just copy it onto a new layer. So control X, control V. Now that's on a new layer. There you go. Yeah. So this is uh, the shape design lecture. Um, next one we will be doing is called drawing form, which will, we'll start to um, make actual, turn our shapes into 3D objects. So um, I'll speak to you next time. Um, I'll see you later. Bye. Hi there! Congratulations on completing this free three and a half hour comic book creation essentials course. It's a great achievement and I hope that you have enjoyed it. You are now ready to get started on creating comics digital art. If you would like to dive into the world of comics and start applying the learned skills, head over to skillademia.com. The beginner to advanced course consists of many more hours of explanations, exercises and demos which will turn you into a pro in no time. You'll be able to learn all about the basic drawing skills, character design, manga styles and backgrounds creation. You'll even create your own comic page and work on different types of projects together with the instructor. If this sounds like something you would like to see, go check it out. Thank you for watching and see you soon.